welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Hey. This week brought to you by Pro Flowers and Squarespace. There's Squarespace, that's Pro Flowers. We'll talk more about them a little later. I'm Gus. You're Nick. Hi, Gus. <laughs> I'm Tim. See, there we go. Yeah. I'm Barbara. I forgot, man. Not everyone knows. I'm Gus. Nick doesn't know anything. Not everyone knows how to go through. <laughs> I like to be introduced, Gus. I'm sorry. I don't introduce myself. <laughs> Nick Scarpi, the one and only Nick Scarpino. Nick Woo! Scarpino. Give him the, the old clap. In. And uh, his lovable sidekick. Tim Geddes. Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah. that's so how it should be. We will be confused at multiple points through the show. I believe it's the yeah. producer slash seducer and the pure one. Yeah, but see, it's confusing because I'm wearing person. his thing. That's yeah. true. He's yeah. repping my brand. Mm. How did you get the nickname the pure one? Because uh, back when I first started doing the podcast stuff, I, w I was super pure. I didn't drink. You know, it was really not really sexually explorative. No. <laughs> and then I just, you know, hit the, I met this guy. I would see, I would see a good looking girl walk by. I'm like, Tim, that's a, a nice looking woman. I just walked by and Tim was like, I'm blind. I can't see anything. I can't see anything. And I'm like, God, I hate you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool shirt though. Oh yeah. This is, uh, this is Lawrence's shirt. I'm not, so again, adding the confusion, the quintessential gamer. Yeah. Nailed it. Terrible. You I can get that, that at roosterteeth.com <laughs> slash store today. Lawrence is like the uh, funhouse version of me, so it only makes sense that uh, yeah. I'm the rooster teeth version of Lawrence. Mm -hmm. We need we need a dope ass like '80s style shirt that has lots of pink and teal on it. Oh yeah, wait, we got one too. Uh, <laughs> give, me, give me my one, Mike. Give me the one. There, you there go. it is. There oh, you go. Go. that broad chest. To start off. Early. Yeah, those push-ups are working, by the way, because your your your, you. your conical boobs are starting to go more into like a pectoral muscle mm -hmm. look, which is nice. You've been doing push-ups? Yeah, every day uh, an alarm goes off, and everyone in the office has to do. Push-ups. How often does the alarm go off? Once a day. Uh, once a day. Oh, once, once a day. day? Yeah. Yeah. Tim's I actually just got a text from Andy Cortez that said the alarm just went off. You better get on there. But I'm, I don't know. <laughs> is that a thing? Can that's we make that happen? Thing. Yeah, that is a floor. That is. Uh, so that's that's sorry, all you need for a push-up, right? Oh, How many do you have to do? As do many ten. as he can. Ten. Do ten. Whatever you want. Whatever I feel like you've been doing it for a week. You should go for fifteen. All right. Can we get a gym shot of this or something? There it is. The gym is out of place. That's okay. There's one. One. Two. You're doing so great. Three. Good form. Four, Knees are buckling a little bit though. You five, <laughs> six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Give me twelve. Or ten. Two more. Two more. Come on. Are you exempt One. from the push-ups, Nick? Yeah, he is. Why is the he exempt? The old people don't need to do it. No. So, <laughs> well, they just left me out of this. This started happening. I, maybe I was gone for a day, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Well, you didn't start at the beginning." So it's like when you miss a day push -ups. of elementary school and you don't know fractions the rest of your life. That was yeah. exactly that what kind of happened thing. to me. Yeah, yeah exactly. And everyone's Spanish. We're training to be the new Funhouse, you know. And that's so we. The that's how I'm going to do it. ten push-ups a day. Is Funhouse day, particularly known years. for doing a lot of push-ups? Fun no, they're just known for being super buff. Are they? All of oh, them. Oh God, they're so meaty. Yeah. Yeah. Have you never Have noticed you that, that, that they're all super buff? I've, I've they're noticed, all like, like really meaty. I think Even James is like the most buff, right? James is James is one of the most cut. But Kovic has like Kovic's got a lot of girth to him. He does. Yeah, and I, I just saw on his Instagram he was like, "This is me at 185. This is me at 205. It's time to lose weight." And it looked exactly the same. He, was he didn't look like, exactly the same. He's a buffer. There's there's some difference in that picture in his lower region, where he's packing some heat. Is Wait, he packing heat? He's packing heat. I don't Adam identify Kovic? guys like that. Like lower region, like 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 crotch area. Yeah. And I'm also out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Tim. I, I could see the look in your yeah. face. Your eyes are just like. It's a, I, I would be like that after one. Yeah. I think. Mm. It's, it's, mm. not, it's not happening. Have I ever seen you do a push up? I feel like I have at some point. Do we want right? to see Gus no, do a push up? No, I'm not doing a push up. I'm not. I'm in the chair. I'm not getting out of the chair. Does the crew want to see Gus do a push up? You right understand? Now? My butt oh, is Gus. stuck to Gus. that chair. Push Gus. up. Gus. Push up. No one's cheering with us. This sucks. Gus is immune to peer pressure. God damn it, Gus. Years of. Yeah, Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, they gotta yeah. work with me. Oh, well, you we have to deal with I can, I, can be, I can be a fucking diva if can I want you? to. Oh, yeah. Bullshit. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll make their life difficult. Gus does what Gus wants to do. Yeah. And I appreciate I that about him. He has him. his own like, space now. Yeah. We're we like, talk where's about Gus's that? new sure. office? So we walk in, and it's this gigantic room, tiny little desk, all hairless cat. Just runs across. I made the cat part up. Yeah. And the desk part up. But it's a big room. But I just love that you have like 10 gameplay stations, and you're one man. Yeah. You have different uh, games playing on each one of them. You're just kind of running back, we, trying to we're, we're, platinum them all. We're trying to. We released. Uh, we used to do podcast let's plays, like for the the podcast crew, and we would release those every so often. It wasn't a regular thing, and uh, I wanted to start trying to do it again. So we released one this past week, and Barbara was in that. We did a uh, use I your sure words. Sure was. Uh, so it was like a, uh, use your words. I use yeah, my kind words. Of, it's a Brennel floss. Kind of a uh, kind of a knockoff Jackbox game. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it was it was fun. I started I started building a narrative about the game. About it being a post-apocalyptic wasteland because mm -hmm. there's skulls in every screen and it started just one really skull. Me out. Wow. One skull, and it's hidden 
They had, there's no explanation why there's a skull in this game, but it's hidden in every single screen for like reasons unbeknownst to us. Mm. Yeah, it's post apocalyptic. No, so but I'm it's sorry, like a movie theme. Narrative. So yeah, that's why oh, there's yeah. so many stations right now. Is hopefully we can start recording them uh, on a more regular basis. Yeah. And now, so I've got like a bunch of stuff for uh, a bunch of space for VR and doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Man, I've been playing some Elite Dangerous in VR. Have you all ever uh -huh. played Elite Dangerous? No. Yeah. Have I? Holy you hell! Haven't. No. no, I haven't. That game is fucking awesome is in fun? VR. Yeah. You have a lot. You it's have like the, the last Starfighter kind of deal. Yeah, interesting. But you don't. So like you don't use space. You're in space, but you don't need a lot of space for that because you're sitting down like you're in a cockpit of a. Of a of a spaceship, the way your office is set up, it kind of looks like a masturbatorium, though. Oh, it definitely it is. does. It, I mean, well, it's very dark. That was, that you was have your purpose. own couch as well, too. And your two desk couches. is facing; it's like couches. against the wall, but it's facing out, so no one could see behind you if they walk in. Mm -hmm. That's a purpose. How what scale of one to ten? How uh, am I allowed to masturbate there? Uh, just you have to make sure you turn the the light on, like put a sock on the on. door, that kind of deal. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That way everyone and knows. the like, cameras hey. have to be on too, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. You have like one of those on air signs. You can see <laughs> it here. Receive first. Yeah. Watch me masturbate behind a paywall. You got a 360 video. Ooh. There it the is. Future. You don't need 360. 180 is fine. No, you got you got fucking you got a circle <laughs> jerk going. Oh, oh fair enough. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Are we all facing outward in this? No, you're facing like, you got like profile. Oh, so the camera's in the middle. Right, we're all right. around it. Ooh, what if it's like Bukaki and the camera is the girl? I'm sure that exists, and I need to find it. That'd I need that in so my life. Cool. Bukaki, what? And the camera's the, the, the girl. 360 is the. Oh. So like everyone's just jizzing onto the camera. That'd be fun. <laughs> it's like a mini game. You have to try to put out all the cameras as many as you can get with one shot. I'm only good for one, and they got to recharge for 24 Who, hours. Whoever could make that, just you know, just call me up. Brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, I, I'm not going to be doing a uh, a Squarespace read anytime soon. That's fair. We, we're going to have to get uh, some distance between uh, between us and that. Yeah. About so, as much distance as the have, people who need. Have, to be have you done much camera. VR I, VR stuff? Much VR gaming? I have yeah, not. Yeah, I mean a lot of PSVR mm. because we're a PlayStation household, and uh, that means there's a, there's a lot of PSVR, which is interesting because it is like the most consumer friendly version, but it's also the gimped, not as cool yeah. as the real shit version. I was really impressed with. How good, like, I mean, it's it's confusing to set up, right? But I was I was very impressed with how straightforward the packaging and the instructions, like, it's all when you un unbox like a PSVR, it's like it all just makes sense. It's, everything's numbered, like yep. this first, then mm -hmm. this, then mm -hmm. this. Like, it's a lot to do, but you know, it's friendly little bite-sized chunks. Well, it's the going. iPhone of VR. Yeah, you know, it's the type of thing where it's like the Androids are better, but the Apple is easier to use. Yeah. And you're your an around. Apple guy. I'm an Apple guy. What about, what about you, Nick? I'm definitely an Apple okay. guy, but I'm an old Apple guy. Let me show you. How old? You got a Newton back there? This is there? a 5S. Damn, I've had yeah. this for about four years. I recently, I don't know if you're familiar with San Francisco area where we're from, but mm -hmm. it rains a lot there. Yeah. And it's been raining lately. And the other day I was like, where's my phone? This is three hours after I'd left my car. Go back to check my car out. It's sitting on the ground being rained on. Ooh. And I'm like, that's dead. Still kicking Apple. Wow. Yeah. And he's like, hey, Tim, so let me, give, let me give you a test call. And he calls me and I just hear, <laughs> I'm like, it's done. And but I'm waiting. I'm caught. I'm stuck in the in the cycle of okay, the new one, the 10th yeah. anniversary iPhone's going to be the shit, and so I'm Just waiting. Always waiting. When is that yeah. supposed to come out? September. Well, this year's September, the 10th October. anniversary, and they're like, it's going to be like bezel-less and all screen and like Holographic. you can charge it by looking at oh. it, and it's waterproof, but it also likes water. Whatever. It's <laughs> it runs off of water. You got you got to water it. Water it, and it grows itself back. I got hey. fucked because I cracked my my previous iPhone. I had to upgrade to the 7s or whatever this is. Oh, plus so seven there. plus. Um, it was gonna be like a hundred bucks to fix the screen or 120 bucks to get the next phone mm. and I was like, well, I'll just get the next phone. I yeah. usually wait every two phones. So yeah. I was hoping to get the anniversary one I put so, a new battery in mine You get it because I'm hardcore look at you fucking bucks hacker. I just liked I, I don't like quintessential things. gamer yeah. I don't like I don't like just randomly recycling stuff that I've only had for years so I'm like, I want to get my money's worth. I've had a car for 12 years. I'm, like, I'm that kind of guy <laughs> eco-friendly. Sorry. Right. Sorry to interrupt you So, um, we uh, don't have our drinks yet so I think that it's time that uh, that we get our drinks here. <gasps> we have a special segment uh, brought to us by Smirnoff. That is classic. That was classic. That's <laughs> so, a good uh, song. Yeah. We have uh, Texas here behind me to uh, make us a, a couple of what's drinks. Up, what's up? We we worked on it. We decided we wanted to try to make a, a special drink because uh, I'm a I'm a big vodka fan. And I like very simple things, so we worked to try to figure out what we could make that I would enjoy drinking. Mm, mm. So it's, it, was, it was awesome when you have like people working to make you the ideal drink for yourself. 
Nice. So we came up with the sparkling Sorola. Ooh. Which is, waiting to get some of your sparkle for a while. <laughs> uh, which is one and a half ounces of Smirnoff number 21 vodka, half an ounce of simple syrup, a squeeze of lime, a squeeze of lemon, topped off with club soda. And uh, Texas is going to go ahead and make us some to enjoy during the podcast right now. That sounds delicious. So uh, I feel like that name is way too fancy for you as, yeah, a, as a person. Fancy. Yeah, I, I, I don't know who, I don't remember who specifically came up with that name. Uh, was it? Was it Nadia? Did you come up with it? No. <laughs> I don't know. She, 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 she's an adamant head, head no. shake. Uh, but yeah, it's it's cool that Smirnoff's uh, sponsoring the podcast. It's gonna be a recurring segment where they're gonna actually make drinks for all of the regular crew. Sorry, guys, oh, you're no. not gonna have a drink. Fine, you can ship you. us one. Uh, so <laughs> or the send next us time a recipe, we have one. We'll have one. <laughs> Probably uh, easier <laughs> for either uh, Barbara, Bernie, or Gavin. So if you're watching and you have a suggestion, you can tweet us uh, what you think some of your favorite drinks are that we can incorporate with Smirnoff and uh, make our own drinks for our cast to enjoy. Mine better be a pun. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure that we'll come up with it. And uh, one, of them's, <laughs> gonna, one of them's gonna have to be a take a on do it. a Moscow mule. Because, oh. you know, I don't know if you know, Smirnoff invented the Moscow mule. Really? I did not know that. The Moscow mule is one of my drinks that. of choice. Yeah, yeah. me too. Like so that. it's That's a super fantastic. popular drink. So if, you, if you've if you ever enjoyed a Moscow mule, you know you can thank Smirnoff. Shout out uh, to Smirnoff. Next that. time I see Smirnoff, I'm going to ask him why the <laughs> copper mug. Yeah, I've always wondered that I've too. I've always wondered that. So. Because it adds that level of pretension. Stays colder. Stays colder. Stays stay colder. Or do this is because they want me to lose my license every time I have to give it over <laughs> for the, for the it's, mug. It's, it's, they're, they're trying to get you. Probably. Uh, so if you're over 21, uh, you should check out Smirnoff. Enjoy it with your friends. Just like we're going to do right now during yes. this podcast. Okay. Oh, we'll oh look at that. Damn, look at that. Oh, oh I got oh, Smirnoff. Oh, wow. Cups and everything. Look at, oh, look at you. That. Look at the green Yeah, me first. Huh? It's, it's the sparkling Sorola. See, so we just much. talked about the copper mugs, and these are like silver? I, I, they're Pure metal? silver. Silver. Well, not actual they're silver. They're probably aluminum. That's the case. I'm <laughs> they're si it. silver colored. Okay. Wow. Oh, that shit's good. Smooth. Hmm. Light. Balanced. So this is the sparkling Sorola? The sparkling Sorola. You're welcome. You know, Gus, you taste delicious. Oh, thank you. I gotta say. Yeah, there's the right amount of sparkle and the right amount of Gus. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, what the, that's what the lime's for. Mm -hmm. Give you a little bit of bite. Just like Gus in real life. Yeah. There's the right yeah. amount of sparkle. Just the right amount. Aww. You guys are being <laughs> really <laughs> nice to each other. It's, Nice. It's a good change of pace from our shows. <laughs> oh, no, it, it can go. It can turn very quickly. That's fair. Yeah. Delicious. Thank you, Texas. You're very welcome. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Texas. And you're welcome for letting you borrow Texas from Always Open. The one we used Texas. him at a, a mastication party a couple That's episodes true. ago. That's true. Well, mastication awesome. party? You're yeah. like the I official Rooster Teeth bartender Esther and I do, uh, my wife and I do uh, live streams where we eat food on Facebook. Because like it's like a popular format in Korea uh -huh. uh, where people are just like, Either make or eat a bunch yeah. of food and have it like live stream and interact with people. Mm -hmm. So we do it like once a month on the your Rooster Teeth Facebook page. Okay. So you just want to be super big in Korea. Yeah, why not? Why well, not? We're, why try, we're just trying to bring the form. I think the thought was to get the format popular here. Mm. Oh, like, gotcha, it's okay. such a big so format steal. in Korea, but really nobody does that here. Right. So like, why not? Like if it seems like it's the kind of thing that would catch on. Yeah. Mm. I'm always really happy whenever we have a mastication party here because I know it means I get a free dinner. And yeah, it's we always so delicious. much. Food. So they get do, so much. Do you guys know what masticate or mastication means? To no, yeah. I used to okay. play hangman in high school. Whenever we had a substitute teacher, and I would choose the word masticate, and people would be like, they try to spell. It. They <laughs> think I was trying to be an asshole, but I was. Yeah. So they, they keep <laughs> the the marketing department keeps telling me that nobody knows what the word masticate means. They're like, you got to change the name. Like, no, no. I think it's really funny. It's yeah. super funny. Yeah. That's yeah. that's one of those words you learn when you're like 12, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. So we, we, I'm smarter than everyone. Our alternate name was we called it mastication part. Our alternate name was uh, mutual mastication. Oh, yes. that's that's good. Too. That's even better. Yeah. That's that, really that's good. Helped. To me, it just sounds like you're going to be torturing each other. I don't know that's, why. No, that's true. It does. It does sound a little bit like a like, like a she's going to be masticated. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, whipped and tied up. I mean, technically, if you're masticating another human being, that is probably a form of torture because you're eating them at that okay. point, right? Okay, this has been a recurring theme for Gross. almost 10 Gross. years on the podcast Cannibal. now. Hypothetical situation. Sure, okay. go for it. Give it to me. If you were in a place where you could legally and humanely eat human flesh, mm -hmm. would you eat human flesh? How hungry am I? It's just like lunch. It's not... Like, just as like, like you're a not starving. It's like, you're cool in a restaurant, mm. and it's like Gus Sandwich. Mm. I mean, yeah, I don't mm. think so. I, th there's something about that that draws me to it, you know? You know why I wouldn't do it? I'd be too afraid that I would develop a taste for it, mm. that I would like it so much that now it's all I want and all I could eat. There's an indie movie out about that right now. I can't Raw? remember the name of it. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone tried oh, to I was thinking of like, uh, no. that show, Santa Clarita Diet. Oh, have you watched that? I have. Is it good? No. Okay. <laughs> it's only... It's not the word. <laughs> I'm a huge Timothy Oliphant fan. It's... Ever since Justified. It's 10 episodes long, so it's a very quick watch. Okay. 
and I just thought I'll just get through it and see what this is about. I didn't really like it. No. No. All right. Never but it's easy. It. Yeah. If you well, want a show just to like are. have on, yeah. and just go through. There's a lot of shows. Answer right the question, Nick. Really. Uh, I got. I got to know. Will Nick eat a human? Well, I'm not I don't think him. I would. I, I'm not against or adverse. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not against eating a human, but it has to be. I have to be able to defend it, right? Like we're stuck in the Swiss Alps. Our soccer, our playing with the soccer team just went down. We're going to die. I have to eat Tim's butt. Is that just the plan of alive? Yeah, that was the, that was yeah. the plan. That, that was Thank South you. America, though. Yeah. Was it totally South America? Yeah, Sorry. Right. Was it a soccer team? Did yeah. I get that right? At least soccer team. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in forever. No, I mean, I would, I would definitely do it, uh, but I'd have to, I'd have to have be able to justify it. I wouldn't just be like Turkey or Tim. I'll take Tim. I wouldn't do that. No, hmm. I would absolutely try it. Would you? Yeah, yeah I think so. It's just going to taste like beef, probably. I don't like, know. Even for me, when people are like, hey, do you want to eat frog? Know, like, you talked about like being uh, like liking it so much and being upset you couldn't get it again. Yeah. Like that happened to me when I went to Japan and I ate horse. It was like interesting. It was really good, but you can't order horse like at a restaurant no. here in the U.S. Mm. Not yet. Mm. Not yet. Yeah. Not until we run out of cows. And then so. eventually they're going to start. They're like it's close enough. Yeah. yeah. They, they're they're homies. Big. I think they they hang out together. <laughs> they go to brunches. Yeah, I think I draw the line if they can actually read and talk. Then I'm not gonna. Oh, so what? Horses are not okay. Horses are fine. But what I'm saying pigs? human aren't, beings are. Can't oh, every oh, animal God. talk? God. Aren't pigs pig? supposed to be really smart? Yeah, but no one. They can. are. No one, no aren't one pigs that. like the closest to humans other than like apes? I feel like dolphins are in there somewhere. Like Simpsons taught me that. I don't know. I know they do like makeup testing on on pigs. What animals similar... would you think are smart? Like that we don't actually sure. know are smart, but just like just looking at them, you're like that guy knows what's going. I would on. Th- I would say the cat is probably a lot smarter than we give it credit for. That would be my guess. Mm, no. I don't know. I think a cat. I think cats get by on instinct. Like Gus hates got, cats. If you uh, hadn't guessed, I hate cats. I don't, they've got a <laughs> couple like of good all. instincts. Like <laughs> the fact that they can shit in a box. Mm-hmm. They're like, wow, that's really smart. Smart. It's like no, that's just like instinct, right? Like they just want to shit in dirt, and you don't have dirt in your house except in that box. It's fair. Mm. I never like, thought of it that way. But <laughs> right? yeah, it's that's like fair. if you had, you know, if you, you had, had a dirt everywhere, a dirt everywhere. bed, they'd yeah. be shitting in your bed. Then you'd be upset about that. That's fair. That's very fair. I never thought about that. So yeah, I think I think they get a lot of credit that they don't deserve. Mm. I too think that cats are Satan's spawn <laughs> and that they should be wiped and they're an abomination that should be wiped off the planet. I do. But I'm also just a huge dog lover, so I, I don't have any more room in my head for anything else yeah. other than that. I also like camels. If you've never met a camel, you should go out and meet a camel. Nick, Nick, camels, camels where, where did you go? Where did you meet the camels? They're lovely. I was in Morocco. I, yeah. went to, I went on a lovely, lovely vacation with my wife to Morocco. Um, and we went to Fez in Marrakesh, and in Marrakesh we got to hang out with camels twice. And he came back a changed man. He would not shut up about because, these of, damn the camels? Camels. We Just think, because we, of the camels. We just because we got to ride the camels, and I felt that that was a little bit exploitative because they were just like chained together, and they were from a, a nearby village. And the, mm-hmm. the kid that was like, like uh, you know, walking us around was like fucking tourists, right? But then we went and stayed at this Casbah up in the up in the mountains, the Mid Atlas Mountains, and they had animals there, and they had all these cool animals, and they had two camels, and it was pumpkin and pickles. <laughs> I I, all the all the animals are named P names. I can't remember the other ones were because fuck all the other animals. But pumpkin and pickles just they come up to you and they just look at you and then you give them some apples and they eat them. And they go, you don't give them pumpkin or pickles? No, apparently that's like frowned upon. Mm. It's like camels. <laughs> 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 nah, I'm just joking. Uh, but no, camels are the bomb. And if I'm ever super wealthy, like rolling in it, and I have my own cool office with my own like little tiny desk where I can just jack off whenever I want, I'm getting a camel. <laughs> Get a camel in yeah, there. definitely. There's a. A used car dealership here in town that it was like a big deal for them for a long time. They don't do it anymore, but like their promotion, their gimmicky thing was on the weekends, they'd have camels, like just in the parking lot. That way you're like driving by and you're like, I guess it catches your eye. We're like, there's a fucking camel right there. A lot of people don't think about it. Like when you see camels in cartoons when you're a kid, mm-hmm. when people are riding a camel, they're riding on the humps. Yeah. But you don't ride on the humps on camel, you ride in between the humps. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Because it's if, like a nice little. If it's a two hump camel. Seatbelt. There if is such a thing as a single hump camel. Which but do you ride on top of the hump? I believe we did, and it's scary as shit. Doesn't that hurt your junk? No, they have a saddle. You put a saddle on. <sighs> but it's really scary because I don't know if you've ever been horseback riding, um, but it's about like four feet higher up than that. Yeah. And so you get on, and they go, they like, they tell the camel, they give the camel the order, and you go up first, but they go up with their, their front legs first. And then yep, back so you you feel like you're about to go over. Go forward. A I have a video bit. of me um, in Morocco doing that, and I am freaking out. I'm like, ah! <laughs> it's exhilarating. Yeah, it I did fun. it when I went to Israel a couple years ago. Did you? Me and the the group of kids I was with on the trip, we all rode camels, and everyone was like sharing a two hump camel. Camel, and uh, there were some guys on the trip who the entire time they were just going, ow, well, ow. Because we didn't have any saddle or anything like oh, that. Oh, that's the oh, worst. Man. But you're like, straight, I, you humped raw. <laughs> never humped raw. You can't go raw, raw humping. You got to be protected. We humped you raw. To protect your um, bits and, and pieces. No, the uh, that happened to me the first and only time I've ever been horseback riding. I'm like, I don't like this when they gallop. 
bounce up and down. And I'm like, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like it. I'm that's like, how, what, that's how that a lot of girls me? discover themselves. Really? Mm. I discovered Camels. something that day. I'm not into it. <laughs> 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 I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. You're just, you're, the important thing is that you're just talking. That's I all am. podcasting is, yeah. right? It it's like you just have to keep talking. It's just like stream of consciousness, whatever comes to your head. It's fun. That's the, I love podcasting. I like the way they do their podcast, the Game Over Greggy show, mm. where everyone comes with like a particular subject or topic. Yeah. Four like topics for sure. We used to spring them on each other. When we bad. first started doing it back in the day, the first like four or five episodes, we wouldn't tell each other topics. And then lo and behold, we don't know anything that the other person knows. So when they'd be like, let's talk about some random obscure topic, all of us would be like, blink, blink. Yeah. Like, well, this sucks. Get out the laptop, start looking it up real quick. So better to uh, pre produce hmm. sometimes when it's topical. We used to try to have, in like the first year of our podcast, we would try to make like a list of shit to talk about. But I stopped doing it because nobody would ever talk about it. No, well, you yeah. talk about it for like five seconds, and then eventually stream of content, you go off on something. Right. Else, so it was like, like I was like, all right, we don't, we, we don't need the list. Well, was it your mentality if like everyone comes with four or five topics to talk about? Well, that was Bernie's counter, as opposed to the one big list was then everyone come with smaller lists. Oh. And then people just didn't never do it. People don't like homework. No. no matter how old you get, you're still like, nah. Homework's bullshit. Yeah. I it's... went one time, a lot, of, a lot of school is bullshit. One time when I was in, <laughs> in fourth grade, uh, I decided that spelling tests were bullshit, uh, so I just refused to do them. Like I went, I, I told my teachers, like I'm not doing anything you're gonna tell me anymore. I'm going on strike, Guess and I made like a little wants. sign that said on strike. It's like I'm not doing any more of this work. Did you spell it right though? Yeah, of course. Mm, okay. uh, so I, I got sent to the principal's office, and I never had to take spelling tests again. Whoa! So it worked. So you won. It worked. I won. Wow! They they taught me. They taught me a that. bad fucking lesson yeah. early on, or a good lesson. The opposite. Here's where you are now. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Man, I could have used more spelling uh, uh, bees and spelling tests in my life because I can't spell for shit. Yeah, but oh, autocorrect's really? a thing. You're good. Yeah, but even autocorrect, like I'll go back and read things that I've written, and I'm like, none of these words make sense because it just autocorrected it to the wrong word. Yeah. See, my problem is when you fucked up the spelling of words so bad. That right clicking on it doesn't even help you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like it doesn't even know what you're trying to <laughs> say. Mark? Yeah, that, yeah. That happens to me. Spelling is really important if you're running social media for a company. Mm. Ooh, especially a big company like Rooster Teeth. Especially because, a big company. Man, like people Teeth. like to make fun of you when you get those wrong. Oh, oh yeah. I, I love calling out the Rooster Teeth Twitter account all yeah. the time See? for spelling is. and the grammar mistakes. Troll. Every time you've done it in the past, it wasn't me that tweeted it. <laughs> so I couldn't be like, it wasn't me, because that would just throw yeah. someone else under the bus. Mm. But, but gotta here you are. Inside. It's always too, yeah. Throwing them under <laughs> the bus. <laughs> Anyways. That's how people have to learn, though. You have to publicly shame them. That's how they get better at spelling. It's true. And that's why I just don't spell things. I have other people write my tweets. True story. It's a very true And story. if I write my own tweet, I go, Tim, can you please read this? Because I don't. Just to make sure. Because my brain looks at it and says, it's fine. And everyone else's brain says, like, that's totally the wrong word. Is that why you don't right. tweet a lot? I don't tweet a lot because it's a combination of lazy, tired, and I'm, uh, yeah, I am terrified that people are just going to make fun of me yeah. for spelling something. Yeah. Or terrified that whatever I actually really want to say will take down the company. So yeah. I don't want to do that either. And my strategy is he's really funny. So I just hang out with him all the time and then I tweet the funny things he says. You tweet and just one out of every him. five things that I say. Well, because because most of the time much. it's a little too much. Yeah. Yeah. I like, but that's the thing. You guys know how it is. It's like, but everyone kind of. You have to get out sort of the stupid jokes before you actually get the good jokes out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that like we've actually said any good jokes. I'm not saying that at all. But every once in a while, you're just you're kidding around with the guys. You're kidding around the car or whatever. And you're like, I just said something terrible. I hope no one actually heard me say that. And Tim's like, I am tweeting it right Too now. late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, too late. At Nick. Oh, shit. I want to start a overheard at Rooster Teeth Twitter account where I just post quotes that I hear around the office but don't necessarily say who they're from. See, See, no, that, no context. That's awesome. No context. We did that back at IGN and it was uh, just shit IGN says and they wouldn't say who it was. So it was always the game of seeing that and being like, I think that was Nick. And like nine out of 10 times, it was like, Nick. Absolutely me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is hilarious because I managed like 20 people at that company. We, we hear a lot <laughs> of like, weird stuff over here. Oh yeah. Well that's the thing too, was when you guys do all the fun like shorts and stuff, there's always like some weird, it's like, like, is this enough dicks? I don't think it's enough dicks. And it's like, that's just a normal conversation here, you know? Yeah. Like hey, one, guys... one from, uh, we filmed something, I won't give it away, but we filmed something last week and it was me who said it. I, I, I said I had green oatmeal up in places that green oatmeal should never be. Hmm. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah. Right. Is that, is there, when we watch it later, are we going to get the context on that? Yes. Great. Okay, good. Green oatmeal. Is mm -hmm. there any place green oatmeal should be? Nope, probably not. Okay. Is that like green okay. eggs and ham? Or is that like a... Nope, just green oatmeal. Green oatmeal, got it. We, we did a short once where there was a, a miniature version of me. And whoever wrote it decided they wanted the miniature version of me to be hiding in a 
jar vat of mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Yeah. Or jar of mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. So I had to like submerge myself in mayonnaise. You actually got mayonnaise? Yeah. Like and that much mayonnaise? Yeah. How many jars of mayonnaise? I was like, I was like covered in it. And um, oh, like for, I, I, I showered forever to try to get it out. It did wonders for my hair. My hair was like super soft yeah. and awesome. But oil. I kept finding like mm. mayonnaise, like, oh, like little quick, oh, like, oh, right in the, like, the little God. curve of your ear here. Like, oh. Did it feel good though? Because I've always fantasized about the whole does. diving into jello yes. thing. And there's something about mayonnaise I feel like that like that, jello that sounds and fun. Mayonnaise are two very different, different things. They are. But like I don't like when you open the mayonnaise and there's that like layer of kind of water on the top yeah. of it. I'm like, I, if I see that, I'm just like, I don't want to eat this again. I feel like you're thinking peanut butter because I feel like I've never opened a jar of mayonnaise and seen water on top. Where, of it. When have you opened it's a like, jar of peanut butter and seen liquid? Yeah. Well, when, if you get the organic get, peanut butter, yeah. it's got uh, all the oil goes to the top. You got to mix. You got to stir it. You are one of those people. Yeah. I'm not He's one of those people. In fact, I just had to confess. They live in San Francisco. Of course you are. Yeah. You would think, I actually don't eat a lot of peanut butter, not because I dislike peanut butter, not because it's organic or inorganic. Yeah, those words work. Uh, <laughs> but because I am addicted to peanut butter. And here's a fun fact for you. I had to come clean to Greg Miller the other day because I, he was like, which one of you has been eating my jar of peanut butter? And I'm like, you know it's me. Like, you know I've been just doing – I just do spoonfuls of it. Yeah, and he, just, he, I just he slow stress. plays it too. Oh, God. It was three weeks and Greg's like – because Greg like doesn't – he doesn't eat like a normal human being. He eats like a kid who's got a really like good bank account. And so he, for breakfast, he'll have um, yogurt with Nutella in it or yogurt with peanut butter. And finally, he went back to the peanut butter rotation and was like, what the fuck? This was a brand new jar of peanut butter. And I'm like, guilty as charged. <laughs> so Greg, I owe you, Mike, give me the one. I owe you some peanut butter. I apologize. Peanut butter is good for you, though. It's good. Everything's good for you in moderation. Mm. When you eat an entire jar at a time Maybe and you not. start getting the shakes because of all the, the, the skippy goodness, yeah, it's bad. Is it crunchy or smooth? I oh, I go both ways. Okay. I do go both ways. I, I prefer smooth because it spoons out better. You can get more of it on there and it doesn't like break off. But the ch there's some. There's I like, some I like crunchy, crunchy for the texture. Well, if yeah. you're doing yeah. just a spoonful, I would say crunchy would be better because yeah. you get it's, the little it's crunch more texture. In there. I, go more fun. I go either way. But honestly. if you're spreading smooth, mm. oh, definitely. Because then it doesn't fuck up the bread. Yeah. Yeah. Because that chunky gets it like you get in there and then you start to get bread on top of it and then it rolls the bread when, up. When like, I was growing up, my family liked keeping peanut butter in the fridge. Yeah. Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, and I never realized how weird it was until I became an adult, and I was like, I've got my own peanut butter. Like, wait a minute, why the fuck do we keep it in the fridge? Because like, you try to spread it on a sandwich, no. and you just like rip your bread yeah, off. Yeah, like cold terrible. peanut butter. Well, yeah. no, but here's the thing: peanut butter ice cream is uh, on another level of success. Just so I'm like, well, maybe that's because it's mixed with ice cream. That's true, but maybe there's something to this frozen peanut. No, there's butter. not. It, it wasn't frozen. It was just refrigerated. Doing, like, it was just, just the peanut. It was butter? just hard peanut butter. You know what? I I only heard about this when I moved to the states: peanut butter waffles. Where people would just oh, put okay. peanut butter on waffles. Sure, that sounds awesome. I that had never amazing. heard of, about that before I moved here. That's I'm just great. a big fan of waffles. I like that waffles are like they're, they're perfect conduits for sauces. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. they have their little their holes. You just fill the holes, put them in your mouth. It's a great time. Peanut butter sounds like it might be a little too thick to put in the holes. Oh no, it's good, if, especially if the waffles it. are warm and you spread that peanut butter and it gets all gooey. Mm. Growing up, my brother was a. Uh, we used to love toast. We were a toast household for sure, um, and he, he would toast bread. Then he would put pe uh, he would put butter on it, then peanut butter. Yeah, okay. which you would think well, would be disgusting, the, but it's process. yeah, it's so good. And then it actually like it doesn't allow the peanut butter to sink into the bread, so it just kind of stays on top, which you would think is weird, but it's very good. Does, does it ever slide off? It does a little bit, so you have to be careful when you're biting into it. But it's extra buttery peanut butter. We oh. were a very large household growing this, up. Yeah. We were big. Although you know what doesn't get enough love? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Those, those things You had are, one at lunch today. Yeah, you had one at lunch, one and today. it blew my mind because I was like, I was ready for like a, a real meal. We went to, where, what was it called? Haymaker. Haymaker, and they, they had this Italian beef combo sandwich. I'm like, my heart's set on this. Uh -huh. And then you ordered the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and like my heart stopped and was like, Tim, what do you do? Then it went to my brain, and it was just like, oh, shit, I, I don't know how to handle this right now. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I stopped, I was like, oh, it was a small peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm like, mm-mm. I'm a big man, but it was still. But I forgot that we're in Texas. Yeah, it was a huge. And then it came, and I'm like, "This is yeah, the biggest." Yeah, the kids' thing I've ever meal seen. at Haymaker is <laughs> like this. this like this big, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty big it sandwich amazing. still, and it's like this thick. Yeah, you, you actually should, you should have gotten the Haymaker. That's a that's the best thing there. That's yeah, what I see. Said. That's then I I did know we were in Texas for that. Where I was like, right. "There's no way that I could finish this thing." As a beast. We had the yeah. habanero pickled eggs. Oh god, those oh, were so that's what I was gonna say. Those were really good. I would go back tomorrow and just get like five more of those. You know what I found out though. Tim doesn't like sandwiches. Uh oh. What kind of thing is that to say? So here's the thing. You it's know how sometimes thing, people guys. say some dumb shit just to get attention? Yeah. Like you. This might have been one of those times. <laughs> okay. No, it's not. Um, you legit, every time I'm like, we let's go get sandwiches, you go, oh. Okay. You're right. You're right. So here's where this all comes down to. Oh. I don't like sub sandwiches. Okay. Like I've just, I'm fine. Which, by with the them. way, is the superior sandwich. 
Uh, we just talked about peanut okay. butter and jelly. The grinder or the sub is the best sandwich. Hoagie, hero, too many names. Any of That's the thing. Too many names. My thing with them is that, they're, they're all fine. Spice. They're fine. They're just never exactly what I want them to be. Like, I've had burritos that have changed me. You know, I've had slices of pizza that I will never forget about. I've never had a sandwich that I remember the next day. I have. I have. Well, okay, a, a sub sandwich. I have. I have. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. These oh. deli sandwiches, these little Dutch crunch. Get the fuck out of here, Dutch crunch. <laughs> Dutch crunch. What, what are you doing for lunch tomorrow? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Whatever you want. What are we doing Unless for lunch? I've got an idea. I don't want to say it on the podcast. Oh, I think I know what you're, I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. We should do that. Yeah. So we did a whole topic on the Game Over Grady show We're gonna about change his mind. fuck sandwiches, and I, I stood up for, also, for what's right. Also, haven't been in Austin to have sandwiches. That's true. That's we true. But I, I could go for a fuck sandwich. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Later tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, does that mean, mean the meat? <laughs> what about like a, technically a sub, Philly cheesesteaks? See, that's this is where or I got into trouble. could be subs. Is all these people are telling me like, Tim, you like a lot of sandwiches, and I'm like, I guess technically you're right, because I do like Philly cheesesteaks, I do like hamburgers, I do like you peanut like butter and jelly. I like, there's a whole bunch of sandwiches that I do like. Hot dogs are not sandwiches. But, no. but okay. hot dogs that was another topic sandwich. on the Game Over Greg show. We get real deep. Uh, but I'm getting a lot of hate on Twitter of people being like, you're a fucking asshole. You do like sandwiches. You do. <laughs> people are getting mad about it. <laughs> so this, this is where I'm, you doubling, asshole. I'm doubling down. I'm like, sandwiches. you know what? Those don't count as sandwiches. And they're like, yes, they do. And everyone's giving me definitions. I'm just like... No. If there is a bread and a meat, it's technically a sandwich, in my opinion. Mm. I, That's why a hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog, just because A equals B and B equals C does not mean A equals C. Those are in math. Yes. Stop doing math. Can you stop doing math? It adds up, Nick. Do the math. I can't. A hot dog is its own thing. I think, wait. Oh, God. Here, go while, while, you, while you think about the, uh, Give it to the status of hot dogs, I'd like to remind everyone this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by ProFlowers. Uh, you know those people that are just hard to shop for, uh, like your wife for your anniversary or your sister for her birthday? It's just the worst trying to find a gift you know they'll like that won't cost you an arm and a leg. So we're going to make it easy for you. ProFlowers is my go-to for flowers. They're fresh, priced right, and a perfect gift for literally anyone. And they get delivered straight to the recipient's door. How easy is that? Right now, ProFlowers has a special offer just for our listeners. Get $10 off your purchase of $29 or more. This deal works on best-selling gifts like their 100 Blooms bouquet, a dozen red roses, or even their totally unique plant gifts. Uh, In fact, my mom's birthday just passed the other week, and I used ProFlowers to get her flowers. been using the service for years, even before they were a sponsor uh, on the podcast. So to snag this great deal, just go to ProFlowers.com, enter code TEETH at checkout. Do yourself a favor. Help out our show by supporting ProFlowers. Uh, if you've got a birthday or anniversary coming up, uh, go check them out. So right now, get $10 off your purchase of $29 or more at ProFlowers. Uh, but this deal will definitely not last long. Go to ProFlowers.com, enter code TEETH at checkout to get the special deal. Thank you, ProFlowers, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast, where we're talking about whether or not a hot dog's a fucking sandwich. True story. And this is a pro maneuver for, for everyone back home. Uh, Pro Flowers, we, we also have a sponsorship with them, and they, they sent us some. And one of the times they accidentally sent it to my house instead of our studio because there was a, a weird scheduling mm-hmm. thing with us. And so they were just at my house. And it was a Tuesday. My girlfriend comes home, thinks they're for her, opens it. I come home, and she was just like, oh, my God. And she was so stoked there was flowers there. I didn't do it, but thanks to Pro Flowers. <laughs> so wait, did she keep Some them good then? things happened. Yeah, I played it off. I totally played it off. <laughs> did you wait? You lied to your girlfriend and said they were for you. I didn't lie. I just <laughs> didn't you? say anything. There was no. There was no. It. That's a lie by omission. You understand mm. that? You didn't. I mean, you didn't write down like something weird on the card that she was like, "What did you mean by?" I mean, she uh, was just well like, soon. "I love the flowers." <laughs> kind of funny. Oh. I love you, Grandma. Yeah. So no, it was great. So pro flowers. They're a good Tuesday flower. It doesn't but, need to be a birthday. By the oh, way, wow. Greg is uh is watching. Is he watching? And he says he'll never forgive you for eating his peanut butter. Well, what's funny is there's one or two scoops left in that thing, so you better eat them while they last, Greg, because I'm taking that shit down when I come home. Now I know what to get you for your birthday. Please. Oh, peanut amazing. butter? Yeah. yeah. Is there like a peanut butter of the month club? Could you get oh. that? Is can there, there be? Than... Here's the deal. There probably can be because like, when you start going down the rabbit hole of peanut butter, it doesn't just stop at, at creamy and chunky, right? You've also there got is. the swirl peanut butters. You can do like the, the like the, the peanut butter and jelly swirl yep. in the thing. There's oh, also man. like probably peanut butter and Nutella there swirl. Is, I assume there totally there's is actually peanut butter. The month. They're, they're not a sponsor. This is like I'm not going to say who it is, but there's a 12 month club for 20 bucks a month. So you get 20 bucks 20 a, month? a month. You get two jars of gourmet peanut butter every month. My you get God. their newsletter. <laughs> oh, thank God! Three a month to keep up with sk- what's going on in the peanut butter and world. Skippy peanut butter. Free shipping. Uh, personalized gift announcement. I don't know what the Have fuck that means. Have you ever tried uh, Reese's peanut butter? Yes. Like they sell the peanut butter that they yes. use in the peanut butter and chocolate. It's not quite the same. 
That yeah. sounds amazing. But yeah, if but that I sounds like it. which one of those like Taco Bell hot sauce things where you're like, that sounds great, I would and think then you get it in the sweet. bottle. It's not good. I, I don't think if memory serves me correctly, it just tastes like peanut butter that's like scented with that the inside. It's not it's not that same consistency. Yeah, the um, kind of crumbly. I, yeah, but I could be wrong. But by the way, shout out to the peanut, Reese's peanut butter cup, which might be the best. Oh, candy on the planet. It is my one like I, number one favorite. My candy favorite thing about Easter Taco. is when they make the fucking egg. Oh, fuck. The oh. egg, and like I love the Reese's peanut butter cups, but when you get it in egg form, it's yeah. just like next level. Oh, it man. throws out, it throws off the ratio, and this is a conversation I've had a lot regarding Oreos as well. Where I'm like, the Oreo is perfect, the double stuffed Oreo starts throwing off the ratio. Same with the peanut butter egg, where it's like, yeah, the the cup itself, we can all agree, if I'm not mistaken, that the uh, the regular size cup is better than the smaller cups. Yes, mm. thank you, absolutely. Um, when you get to the egg, you're like, this is just a little bit too much. But then by the time you're halfway through it, you're like, what the fuck am I saying? Why am I even worrying about this? Eat the rest of this egg and yeah. shut up. Yeah, the yeah. eggs are awesome. Have you ever had? Uh, I think they're called Reese's sticks. No. no. Oh yeah, that's when they tried to like copy what Twix does, and it was just no. the Reese's uh, don't Reese's don't try to play Twix's game. Reese's. They are really good. They're like really, really, really good. Are they? Remember yeah. when, when Reese's had Reese's Puffs? And you can have Reese's for breakfast? I had every Oh, yeah. Reese's they still have those. Really? I think, yeah, I think so. Mm. They don't have the commercials, though. My wife and I, uh, for her birthday every year, we pick out two cereals and we eat cereal all day. That's the only time we have breakfast cereal. Do and every once in a while. Do you still even watch commercials? Huh? Tim, you watch commercials? Uh, I just noticed that we were stuck in my one, <laughs> and that, is, that might be my favorite thing. Can As I start back? talking about my wife, yeah. you start giving Google ass to the camera and uh, like winking at it yeah. like, I've had sex with her. <laughs> have you? <laughs> no. You son of a bitch. Where do you come down on the Cadbury egg? He got her flowers on a Tuesday. I did. If you please do that. The I Cadbury. Should. I should. You should definitely send my wife flowers. I'll send Gia something a little special. Okay. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Cadbury eggs are yeah. too much. Too much? Too yeah. much for Cadbury me. mini egg. Oh, those are the bomb diggity. Yeah. The bomb. Diggity. I'll snort those things. <laughs> we had some in the <laughs> kitchen. The, yeah, I know. I had ago. like I had a handful of them on the way in. Yeah. I didn't even know that I did it. But before I was even thinking, I was chewing on them. And I'm like, <laughs> did I just put a shitload of mini Cadbury <laughs> eggs in my mouth? I did. You also got a slice of birthday cake? I got a, I, well, no, I went in for a quarter of the birthday cake, mm -hmm. and then I went in for another sliver of the quarter, which basically equals the slice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I wanted. I was. I was wandering around uh, the other stage a little earlier. I wanted chocolate, and I walked into the achievement hunter office, and they were filming a let's play. And they were like, "What are you? What are you doing in here, guys?" I was like, "I'm looking for chocolate." And they were like, "Oh, there's some in the fridge." And I found it. I was like, "Yeah, oh, okay. Ryan had a bunch of Kit Kats, little yeah. frozen Kit Kats." They were, they were like, "They were like, how, how is the chocolate?" I was like, eh, "It's okay. It's not really what I want." Then I wandered over here in a stage five. It's fucking chocolate cake. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah. And I walked back over to the team. I was like, hey, there's cake. <laughs> it's like just wandering around. Like I had, a, I had a sense, I had a feeling there was chocolate here. See, the frozen Let's Kit Kats see. were fantastic. So maybe peanut butter, no good. Frozen Kit Kat, they were, Yeah, good. they're pretty. And you know why? Because it solves the number one issue I have with the Kit Kat bar, which is that inevitably when you're two sticks in, you're getting it all over your fingers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? If it's frozen, you got you got three sticks at least before you have to start worrying about that. I think yeah. that's very important. We should try freezing Cheetos and see if it has the same effect. Dude, I've been on a hot Cheeto no. kick recently. Oh, hot Cheetos are the bomb. Dog. So I had a, an amazing idea where I was like, all right, my girlfriend really loves to cook. I could not, could not care less, right? I saw this entire So there's a Instagram. fight between like, are we going out to eat tonight or, or are we cooking? And I was just like, if we can cook with hot Cheetos, I'm in. And she's like, you have to give me an idea. And I was like, here's the idea. It's gourmet mac and cheese. Yeah. But instead of that shitty bread stuff on the top, we crunch up some hot Cheetos and put them on. How was Damn, it? Damn, son. Damn. It sounds amazing. Remember earlier when I was saying that, uh, that I've had burritos that changed me? Yeah. This mac and cheese changed me. It did. You you talked about it all day. And mm -hmm. then I was like, cool, man. You brought some in for all of us, right? And you're yeah. like, no, dude. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you should bring it to the next potluck you, you go to. Well, we should. We no, should do we, that. I got, I've got an idea. I, I, Stop me if I'm going too far here. Okay. You kind of funny live three. No. I don't Tim makes know. hot Cheeto mac and cheese for everyone in the audience. Oh. I can't make it, but I'll, I'll have Gia make Gia it. Gia makes good. it. She could do that. She could do that. She'd be I'm like, down. For like, She'd be working for like a week, an entire week to make yeah. that, that much. It's going to be yeah. gross by the time kind of funny live. <laughs> I've had a couple ideas for food and kind of funny live. I'm just going to put this out there. See if anyone's listening. But there's been an ongoing fight between the pineapple on pizza versus no pineapple on pizza. No pineapple. There's no fight. I want to order just a shit ton of pizzas, half and half, and just kind of put them out into the crowds. No, again, and you, don't, you can't do a half and choose. half. That's the problem. Again, everyone's just, they're going too hard on this. You don't default to the pineapple on pizza. That's just a small pizza or a half of another pizza that you get. Just to have a little a little variety in your yeah. life. That's all I'm saying. Shout out to the kid, though, that put the pizza on the pineapple. Yeah, that oh, was yeah. good. That was genius. That was Very good. smart. That was genius. The pizza on the pineapple? He was yeah. like, Why not know he, what you're talking about? He was like, here's a new debate, and it was just a pineapple, full pineapple with skin and all on it, and a piece of pizza on top of it. And he was like, what about like, We all know that pineapples <laughs> don't belong <laughs> on a pizza. Yeah, reversing see, the joke, Did guys. you see that thing that so Elise one twe
That sounds <laughs> awesome. These people, that when will they awesome. stop? You know, you think that humanity has just kind of topped out and then you hear shit like this. Like back at home in SF, there's this place called Curry Up now and it's mm. chicken tiki masala in a burrito. Yeah. And I'm like, God made that. That's the great thing about America. Is there's endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, what stick are all these different foods and mash them up do. together. I mean, I feel like Hot Cheetos haven't had their fair shake, like being put in things yet. You know. So someone on Twitter. Who, uh, we should have a, a cook-off with Hot Cheetos. Yes. Lu oh uh, Jesus, Llewellyn. Right <laughs> God, I, 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 I butchered this person's name before. It's Welsh. Like I think it's Llewellyn David. Sorry. I uh, said chicken crusted with tackies, which is kind of like a. Like a hot Cheeto kind of thing. Oh, okay, we, like don't, a, we don't got them tagged. Like chicken crust. Oh, you like could a, do that. Like a baked chicken crust. Yeah, like a, yeah, yeah, like a yeah, hot yeah. Cheeto. That'd be amazing, actually. I feel like it's just a good. It's like a good garnish for anything that you don't necessarily want to be eating. Mm. I used like to a, love like crunchy stuff in things that are usually soft. So whenever my family would make tacos or burritos or anything, mm. I would always take tortilla chips and crunch them up. And put That's them good. in. That's a problem. The tortilla. I used to do that with sandwiches all the time. Like I take like Fritos and put them. And like, you're like, I need to make this edible. Or potato right. chips. Like, you get like a ham and cheese sandwich and then put Fritos in there. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. We uh, we do that sometimes. Uh, we're kind of a low carb household, but we'll take pickles every once in a while and put them and wrap them up. You're feeling turkey. real crazy just to get that Whoa, crunch, pickles? That crunch effect. Hey, you know, only if it's Saturday. Yeah, Man. we'll be going cheat hard. day. All yeah. right, exactly. Sometimes they're um the sweet pickles, which I used to hate. Hate sweet pickles. And now I love. What? Hate sweet pickles. How? Fucking terrible. I can understand that. I no, can. I can definitely deal understand. for life. Every single pickle is God's gift to Earth. I'm a pickle fan. Except for uh, what are they called? Butter pickles. Bread and butter pickles. Yeah, butter, butter, bread, and butter. Sweet. Butter yeah, the kind of they're kind of sweet. Oh, they're so good. Terrible. Mm. No, look. You got to know what you're getting into. I uh, feel like I... here's the problem. Every one of us went through the same issue, which was when we first started. Like when you're young, you love pickles, right? You're like, pickles yeah. are great. And then someone forgets to tell you that you're getting a sweet pickle mm. or you're getting the bread and butter pickle and you eat it and you're like, something's off. Yeah. And it traumatizes you for the rest of your life. But if you know. But if you know. Mm. Like if you're really in a pickle, then it's okay. Unexpected pickling. Good for you. Yes. Absolutely. Good for you. I love pickles. I'm love being olives. told by Patrick there's also a pickle of the month club. <laughs> How are there is enough there, Is there a hot Cheeto meal of the month club? And if not... I'm sure there is. In the next RT box. That is, is that the thing? This, RT box? Yeah, uh, yeah, the double yes. gold box. Yeah. The is. double gold box? Yeah, you're going to get some hot cheese. Yeah, we, we just put an update about the double gold boxes on our website that people could read about how we're improving the quality and types of items that we're providing. So sign up for double gold. That's the worst way to sell something. There's this thing that people can read. <laughs> you know? But I, Damn. <laughs> they say it better than I do. Mm, mm, mm. It's like a whole thing. A committee sat down. Yeah. Wrote it. No, they didn't. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it was just us. I feel like there's at least 30 good recipes you could do. I feel like you could do like a, a recipe a day yeah. sort of thing with the Flaming Hot Cheetos. Well, so here's something. Uh, this is a question for you guys. So we just stole one of your employees, Andy Cortez. Good riddance. He is now a kind of funny employee. And I love this. He told us all your secrets, by the way. He so. did. I yelled at him once when he sat over here. He kept did trying you? to talk. Yeah, yeah he does Oh, because he's got the hair. He's got the anime yeah. hair. And everyone's yeah. like, oh, he's so cool. But he's, he's trying to sell us on this, this uh, beer salt that you guys have. Oh, yeah. And he's like, if you put the beer salt in the hot Cheeto bag, that's some next level shit. What? I've never thought to do that. What if I you did, you know Frito good. Pie? You guys know what Frito yeah. Pie yeah. is? What if you did Frito Pie, but instead of Fritos, it's hot Cheetos? I've seen that. Hot yeah. Cheeto oh, Pie. Oh, the, the junior, when I was in junior high, we had this terrible like snack bar. I don't know why. the There was this like snack bar uh, right across the street from uh, junior high. And they would serve... They would cut open a bag of hot Cheetos and pour like nacho cheese over it. Oh, that's oh, sweet baby cheese. I, I, just I felt my heart just clog up right oh, now. So like that. for lunch regularly, that's what I would eat. It's just like hot Cheetos covered in nacho cheese for lunch. How are you alive? How are you skinny? Yeah, oh, lunch lunch in middle school was a weird there thing. There I remember daily we had the, girls, the baby <laughs> country time lemonade yeah, and, a, and a couple bagels because it was never just one bagel. You had you a couple know, bagels? couple bagels God, a You had the best metabolism when you were a kid. Yeah, then all of a sudden it just stopped. So yeah, many girls dude. in my high school would have french fries for lunch. That's it. What's, I used what's, to have... There's a picture here that I'm liking that's a, a lot. That's Is a, that hot Cheetos? That's the hot... Hot, hot Cheeto, Cheeto pie. Cheeto pie. Oh, so good. It exists. My heart be still. So this, uh, if I'm not mistaken, what was it, Frito pie? That's the stuff they serve at like packs, right? Where they just cut the top of the bag off and just pour stuff That's like it. the yeah. original way to do it, right? Yeah. There's a lot that's of restaurants that. in Austin that serve Frito pie. We went to, when we were at Haymaker, you recommended that we get the poutine. But my question is, is it good enough poutine? Compared you come to, from the land of poutine. I do. Compared to the other places in Austin or even in the States that you get poutine, it's it's up there. It's up there. They've got, they've yeah. got a southern style poutine as well, which, which is covered in white gravy instead of brown gravy. Blasphemy. Interesting. And also has, I think, meat on it as well, which even is fine. Interesting. 
Yeah. But you gotta have the brown gravy. That's just chili cheese mm. fries at that point. Yeah. It's supposed to be 100. percent We're all just ripping off Del Taco. You guys don't know what Del Taco is, but I do. Oh, yeah, we do. We have Del Taco. Do you guys have Del Taco? Do we have Del Taco here? I think. I don't think there's Del Taco in Austin. Used to. Used to. Used to. Yeah. It's a travesty that it, that used to. Del, ta- took... Del Taco is where uh, Bernie and I had, Bernie and I had one of our biggest fights ever. Really? It do was tell. At, at a Del Taco in L.A. We were there for E3 in 2001. Mm. It was late at night. And I was wearing contacts at the time. I just wanted to go back to my hotel room, take my contacts off. Bernie was like, let's go to Vegas. I was like, I don't want to. I don't want, I don't. After E3. Right. It's like, I don't want to drive to Vegas right now. I just want to go back to the hotel. He's like, let's go to Vegas. Let's go to Vegas. And it was the first time I met Matt, actually. Matt Hullum. Matt was driving. <laughs> okay. And uh, I said, listen, Bernie, if you say Vegas one more time, I'm getting out of this fucking car and I'm leaving. And he goes, he says, are you that mad? You would leave if I said Las Vegas again? And I said, okay, in my mind, I'm like, he's challenging me now. Right. He knows I just said that. Right. I have to leave I the gotta car. I got out of the car. So I got out of the car. It was like the first time I'd ever been in LA. Yeah, well, that's not um, a great area, by the way, especially, what was it, 10 yeah, years it was, ago? We were in, yeah, we were in uh, West Hollywood at oh, the time. Okay. And right, uh, so, so I start, like, I just walk down the street. I find a 7-Eleven, withdraw some cash. and like, all right, find a cab. I go back to the hotel. I tried to book myself a flight that night to come back to Austin. Oh my God, Couldn't. you were really so mad. I, this is vindictive. So I packed up all my stuff, left a note that said, see you back in Austin, assholes, then moved and got another hotel <laughs> and went and stayed over there. That's amazing. God bless That's, you. Did they end up going to Vegas? No, <laughs> they did not end How up going to Vegas. How much money did you waste on just being was, angry with Bernie? It was a lot. See, but waste is... But you won. But I won. But you also I, I did not go to Vegas. No, you didn't go but, to Vegas. But, but, but we also lost. I feel like yes. that's the kid who's just like, I'm going to run away from home. I hate you guys. I'm going right. to run away. And they're like, all right, go ahead. And you like go out the front door. And you're just like, like shit. Like, they're going to they're gonna come looking for me in five no minutes God. when I don't come back inside. I never bothered running away from home because I like the Twinkies there too much. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I can't guarantee that wherever I wind up is going to have Twinkies. So Is there like a little like fat kid inside of you that's always just like... Oh, they're always, I used to be, because like, I used to be fat. I used to be like a really, or I'm still, I'm still a chunky monkey, but I used to be like, when I was a kid, I discovered that it was much more fun to watch movies and eat Twinkies than it was to do pretty much anything else. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. And then it was like, well, I, when I wanted my physical exercise, I would just play like video games and then I would go back to watching movies. So this is, a, there's a, a story lifestyle. that needs to be told here about yeah. one Nick Scarpino, because you yeah. see him now, he's the svelte young man that he yeah. is. Uh, but I back in the day, he was a little chunky monkey. And how, in long, high how long school, ago are we talking? High school. Okay. No, in okay. college. College is when I ballooned up. College was when I was like, I I have this thing that gets me to a cafeteria. I'm living in the dorms. And also we had a like within walking distance with a Del Taco. Mm. So I had I lived the most health unhealthy year of my entire life. We'd go to dinner, hang out, go back. I think it was like play PS2 at this maybe maybe PS1 even. Mm. And then we'd go to Del Taco. Okay. Late at night. It was the worst. I ballooned up from to put in context, I'm at around 185 right now. I was 265 in college. Oh, wow. Damn. I yeah. was a big boy. What but so you... The story here is he was in he was in drum major. and you I was the... a drum major in high school. Thank you for bringing that up in front and of this brand new audience. Exactly. They, they need to know this. <laughs> and then Nick yeah. was the guy in the front of the like <laughs> the drum the line. Band. Like Nick Cannon would be in front of him. And he had to do the Similar whole thing. I'm, a lot of people call me the white Nick Cannon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and But he would be his ass would be facing the, the whole audience mm-hmm. or whatever football games have. And uh, the his drum leader, I don't know these words. Band director. But the band director was like, you, we're not getting a smaller little outfit for you. You're going to fit in this cute little outfit and you're going to get skinny. So the story goes, I, I got, I tried out for a drum major in my junior year. And my, my band director wanted me to continue to play trumpet because I was one of the, no big deal, stronger trumpet players <laughs> on the line. And he was like, I really want you to do the solos. We have great solos playing. And I was like, no, I want to be the leader of this band. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great experience for me. And he was like, no, I think you'd be terrible at it. I'm like, you, sir, are not great at inspiring the youth of America. And he was like, I don't care if you, he's like, to incentivize you to not do this, basically. He was like, I'm not making a new out, a new uniform for you. And the guy before me that the uniform fit perfectly was like 30 pounds like lighter than me and shorter, I might add. Um, so I spent the entire summer, I was like, I'll, I'll show you, sir. And I spent the entire summer, um, working out in my front yard at night and shadow boxing by myself shirtless, um, so that I could lose weight. And then when I would, uh, when I would want to eat, I'd go into the refrigerator and open it up and I would stare at the food until I didn't want to eat anymore. And I would just kind of like shake my head a little bit. And it's like a mind out. game with the food. Yeah. It was pretty bad. And, and I ended up losing like 15, 20 pounds. And I came back that same year. And that same year, we came back from, from uh, we went to band camp, which was, you know, the two, two weeks prior to going to school. And I was like, what the fuck are those? And my band director was like, oh, those are the new uniforms. Yeah, we got new uniforms. <laughs> and I was like, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. But, but are it you worked. happy you did it? 
super happy. Yeah. It was one of the it was one of the first times in my life I'm like I'm going to make a healthy choice for myself and try and and lose weight and try to be um you know fit. You do it the way you do because you don't have any context for it. like I didn't work out. It wasn't in co- like football or anything in high school. So I was like the only thing I've ever done in my life was like six months of karate kempo. And so I'm like, and I was a huge Bruce Lee fan back in the day. So I was like, I think I could just sh- throw kicks in my front yard and do some pull-ups on the tree. Don't you branch. do capoeira? No. What do you do now? Capoeira. <laughs> no, 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 not capoeira. Fucking break no, it's dance a, fighting. It's like a, Eddie Gordell. Yeah, jiu-jitsu? Like, no. no. I do jiu-jitsu now. Jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so but that, that's a whole other story. But <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was my first uh, time actually trying to do that. And then... After high school, I went to college and discovered that I, no one was there to stop me from doing anything. And so I was like, I'm just going to keep eating. Yeah. And we had a green, I'll never forget this. We had a Carl's Jr. slash green burrito mm. in, at, my, in, at college in the food court. And I would eat that every day. We, uh, was when, when I was, a, was a freshman in college, you know, we had, I, when you're a freshman, they make you at the college I went to, you had to buy like this giant meal plan. And everyone was like, it's impossible to spend all that money. You can't possibly spend all that money. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to spend it. I'm going to eat all that food. So with every meal, I would eat, uh, a pint of ice cream. <laughs> it was oh like, because like I would eat all my food and it's like, I need to spend the rest of the money. I'm going right. to get a pint of ice cream too. With every meal, I ate a pint of ice cream. Oh my and, God. And uh, I could not put weight on. Everyone would look at me like, what the Nick's fuck are you doing? I was eating like two or three pints right of ice here. cream a day. It was like nothing. It, yeah. I know. I mean, I, I, I gained like maybe like five or 10 pounds. I got, I got like a little stomach and that was it. Worth it for that ice cream, man. I, I remember when back in college, my friend Alfredo, his girlfriend at the time, uh, had the little meal plan, but she always cooked for herself, so she never used it. So at the end of the year, every year, she would just have an insane amount of money on her her card, mm-hmm. and she just gave it to me. And Alfredo, one time there was a Jamba Juice on campus, and we just walked in and we're like, "How much Jamba Juice are you make me right now?" <laughs> and they were like, they're "Like, like, I don't know, 10? I'm like, "Can you do 20? And they're like, "Yeah." Can you do 30? They're like, "Yeah." We got up to 55. We had 55 large Java juices made. We paid for that shit, walked out, and it was like Christmas for the people in that area. Okay, Just I was like, did you give these to people or did you drink? Oh, no, drink we gave them one. We gave Christmas gave them because one. what we did was we took them and we threw them in oncoming traffic. <laughs> it was super fun. Don't tell them about you that. You put part, them in like, a bathtub and just soaked yourself swam in Java juice. Like Gus and yeah, it was like, or like yeah. Tim wants to do with his Jello. Oh, man, exactly. see, that'd be Java juice, nah, it's a little too Too thin. cold, though. Yeah. But I, my favorite thing about you, Nick, though, is that's a true story. You actually shadow box Yeah, I actually did. There are people, there are legitimately people, my parents still live in that house. That will attest to go like they would drive by and I did it at night and I did it shirtless. You ask yourself shirtless. Why shirtless? And I was was because I want everyone to see my shame. Yeah, literally like people would drive by and I'd be like, no, just keep shadow boxing and don't and like let them look at your body. Let them look at your shame. Do that if your shirt was on them. Um, yeah, you know what? When you when you're in that emotional state, you just you got to punch dance through it. I feel like you you like to play. Not play, but you, you're you all about the mental aspect of it. Like, you think that, like, to psych yourself up, looking at the food till you don't want to eat it anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. all, it seems like with you, it's like getting over that mental barrier and just, like, conquering yeah. it was. your well, mental well, state. That, I mean, that's, but that's mostly, like, I mean, everyone has their own hang-ups when it comes to, like, to weight and things like that. But for me, that was the big hang-up. It was, like, I grew up in a very Italian household, and the food was always so good, and there was always so much of it. And I was never told not to, like... Not to eat. You were probably told to eat. A oh, lot. My, yeah. I mean, I have an Italian mother who's like, you're, you're always too skinny. Yeah. And I'm like, mom, I'm 265 pounds of 5'8. My dad, my fucking my, rhombus walking down the it's street. It's the same with Jewish families. Like, I know uh, my grandparents were always just like, eat, eat, you're nothing but skin and bones. Well, you are nothing. Which, but skin I mean, I, at the time I was very skinny, but still they would tell me that. And then my dad does this thing every time he serves us dinner and he's like scooping stuff onto our plate. Whenever you go, okay, I'm good, without fail, always gives you one more scoop. Yeah. Every time. So you gotta learn time. to like, Time so it you're well. ready early. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm good. One more. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah, I see. I grew up with a brother as well, and so when you grow up with an older brother, you always have to fight over the like. And my mom would make enough food for an army. You'd walk in, and there would be like enough food for like 40 of your friends. But we'd somehow try to f- have to finish it because we'd get that competitive nature. I'm like, I want the last meatball, and he would want. So we'd eat as fast as possible, <laughs> and then he would eat shit off my plate, and we would like stab each other with forks. Very good upbringing. My family eats really fast. We're, we're, we're finished dinner in seven minutes. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm I'm all about even when I go out to eat now to this day, if I go out with Esther, it's like we go in, it's like we're ready to order, we eat mm. and get the fuck out of there. Like we'll see people who've been there before us and they're still there when we leave. Yeah. yeah. It's like we're just in, eat, out. See, I enjoy the whole communal kind of social talking experience oh, yeah. of going out. So like but I'm with you on the like if we're going to a restaurant together, you better know what you're ordering yeah. by the time that the, the waiter or waitress comes. Yeah, they come like, by for like a drink order. It's like we're, we're ready for our food now too. Yeah. <laughs> One of my really good friends' uh, fiancés is vegetarian, Mm. and that creates a lot of problems because that limits what she can eat. And we'll go to these restaurants, and she's the one that did not prepare 
for what she's ordering. I'm mm-hmm. like, we're all ready. And she's like, oh, what? Oh, and then she'll like order the one thing. And they'll be like, oh, sorry, we're out of that. And then she's like, oh, it's okay. And she's like, she'll just give up. I think we're it's too like, rushed. No. We're too rushed as a society, especially mm. with going out to dinner. I think it's good to have people like that at your table because then you get to talk more. It's true. You yeah, s- you see sucks. that when you go to Europe, when you when you go to like yeah. a you know a restaurant there, and and the culture is about dining. Like I have I have uh, I know people that have gone to Spain particularly, and they always talk about like you go and you're just you're supposed to be there for like you're supposed to enjoy each other's company, and so they don't rush you out of the, out That's... of the. Out of the restaurants. Yeah, sometimes I've had trouble with that. Like, uh, I've never been to Spain, but, you know, whenever we go to Australia or New Zealand, like, they will not... When you say you're done with the meal, that is not code there for bring the check. Right. You have to very explicitly say bring the check. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah, we're done. Then be like 50, like, where the fuck Well, they're the also not working we for still tips. Here? Right. Yeah. I'm like, can we get the fuck out of here? I don't want to be sitting here. It's nice, though. It's almost like, you know, you, you sit, you relax, you, like, wait, you let your food digest, maybe have a cup of coffee, maybe another aperitif. You know, Some add more Diet Cokes. 10 more Diet Cokes in my case. Mm. You were um, impressed with the Diet Coke you got today? Dude, God bless Texas. The Diet Coke was like this big. I'm like, I could swim in this thing while I'm waiting for the appetizer to arrive. It's fantastic. Hey, the same thing at the uh, Mexican restaurant. And last night. the Alamo Draft House, both are notorious, I think, for their giant. Gl- oh, like, then they need to call the Alamo hands. Draft House in San Francisco and tell, tell them, them that that's what we their need. Shit. Oh. Because they have small drinks and they don't give me, they're not Johnny on the spot with the refills. Also, shout out to the wings here. At the Alamo Draft House, but not the ones in San Francisco. The Alamo like Draft House in SF is it's no bueno. I love oh, it. Okay. I love seeing movies there, don't get me wrong. But I've got some small points of feedback that I would like to give to their management. Well, namely, say it now. They're watching. Namely, I need when 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 Diet Coke is like halfway empty, it's time to bring daddy another one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> do you, uh, speaking of which, <laughs> creepy. Are you uh, creepy are you okay? Does anybody need a refill? Y'all okay here? I'm good. Uh, I'm, okay I'm good so oh, far. Yeah. Just Thank checking. Because you're you're now I'm gonna check on you. Oh, I appreciate. I want to make sure you. I ready. thought you were gonna ask me if I had to pee. No, no, I'm fine. Now, if you need to, go go knock yourself now out. Now that I think about it, no, I'm okay. I also like I'm that you right. decide tonight that you're gonna call Bruce Green Daddy from now on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do. I like to. I like to um, subtly mess with Bethany. I don't know why. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's it makes fun sense. For me. She, she gets flustered. She does. It's fun. She doesn't understand because she like she's so sweet and like innocent. That, way, that she does definitely doesn't deserve any of us. <laughs> I'm, I'm looping both of you, like lumping both of you guys. Oh yeah, she doesn't. Enough. Yeah. Um, she yeah, I don't know. Have to put up with us. Going back to the restaurant topic, I don't mind the the dinner if that's what the expectation is. Where I do mind it is when people walk into a Starbucks for the first time and have never ordered there before, and they take their sweet time trying to order, and it makes uh, me want to stab. If them I go to back. a place I've never ordered before, I stand back, stand back, yeah. figure out what I'm going to do, and then, and then go then, up to the cash. Engage. I that's was at the uh, so at the Austin Airport here. I don't know if you all have ever noticed, the Austin Airport does not have like chain restaurants in it. It's all like local businesses. Right. Um, so I was at the airport a couple of weeks ago and I was at like one of those newsstands. I was buying a bottle of water to take with me and the woman in front of me goes up to the, the cashier and says, can you tell me where the nearest Starbucks is? And the cashier's like, well, the Austin airport doesn't have a Starbucks. There's an Austin Java right here. You can get your coffee there if you want. And the, the, the passenger was like, what do you mean? There's no Starbucks in the airport. And the cashier's like, well, you know, we want, we're trying to support local businesses, so there's no chains. Mm. It's all Austin businesses. And the one in front of me goes, well, I would like to file a formal complaint that there be a Starbucks here. And the cashier was like, okay. Like, I'm I mean, it's like, like, okay. like, 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 that person to do that to. <laughs> like, you're complaining to the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. They should be like, okay, what's your name? Yeah, just start taking it down. Uh, no ma'am, you're writing on your hand. No, nope, I'm no, taking no, no, notes. I'm taking notes. I'm here. Yeah, no, what's your number? Okay. It's, it's such a weird. I've never seen someone Gender. that passionate about having shitty burnt coffee before. Yeah. Well, have you had Austin mm. Java? Austin Java's all right. It's mm. fine. It's not my favorite. Mm. I've spent a lot of time in the Austin airport, and it is one of the the saddest airports the, when it comes to food options. The Austin Java at the airport's also the worst one. Yeah, I can imagine. Aren't yeah. they getting a second bar? Yes. At the airport? Yes. Right. Yes. There's a place called Second Bar and Kitchen. Okay. Down here on Second Street in Austin. Go for your great place. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. They also have another location up at the domain now too. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I went there for brunch recently. See, we got screwed at SFO um, because Pete's. And, uh, you guys don't have Pete's out here, no. I don't think. But Pete's coffee is very popular in California, specifically Northern California. It's very good. Um, I love Pete's. I love Pete's. It's good. I like Starbucks too. I'm not trying to choose between my kids here, but sometimes when I just want Starbucks. Like nothing else will do, and unfortunately, Pete's won the war of who gets to be inside the terminal, mm. and Starbucks is outside the terminal. So it sucks because you have to look at it as you're about to go to security and be like, either I get it now and have to suck it down, or I have to go through security and get Pete's. Can you drink? Co- you drink coffee before you get on a plane? Fuck yeah, I drink coffee all the time. 
Coffee just makes me. It's shit. It's ill-advised. Coffee makes me shit though. Does it oh, still shit on make plane's you great shit? though, because like if you get up to altitude, it compacts it. No, but then I worry. It's, it's like, right out. like I, I need a shit. Like oh shit, they just closed the door. I need to get oh, up. Yeah, like, oh yeah. We have to you wait till we hold it. You gotta yeah, you gotta, it in. You gotta fight with your guts. Do you guts have trouble yeah, holding you gotta... your poop in? What? Do you have trouble holding? When your... I drink coffee and I need to go, I need to go. Oh no. It's like it's the best. You got yeah. I've got a very limited window to get done. Now, do you? Because sometimes, like, how how intense is that? Because sometimes, if I walk into a Starbucks or a coffee shop and I smell the coffee, I'm like, it's go time. It, it, You're it, a broken. It, man, it starts Nick. percolating. Yeah, it starts <laughs> like, like, he's, oh, it's like oh, here like, we go. Feel a little bit. You got to move around in the shoulder area. Do you drink coffee? To get it going down. I drink an insane amount of coffee. But, and does it make you poop? Uh, no, it doesn't really make it, me poop. It, it didn't used to happen to me either. Yeah. It, it was, I remember when it happened. It was when we were still in the Buta office down in uh years ago in Buta, like. <laughs> One day I just realized that I had, I started shitting every day and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, oh, now it's, it's because the coffee shop's below yes. us and I'm drinking coffee yes. every day. Like, the, the turn happened in that office and I destroyed the toilet there. Sorry, whoever lives why there Why is now. it that every <laughs> single show we've been on recently, like, it No, I'm proud it of us. We turns lasted, into poop. What time did we start? We lasted an hour. We lasted yeah. an hour an before hour we started talking about poop. our bowel movements. Yeah. I'm excited about it's that. Impressive. That means we're growing up here. I, I gotta bring this up. Uh, we had a guest on our show a couple days ago, Stephen Ogg, mm -hmm. who was in uh, Walking Dead and, uh, West and Westworld. He was um, Trevor in GTA V. Uh, he came on the show and he started talking about poop because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, he taught Before us about the, the log on log prank. What's that? Oh, this is a prank. It, it is a prank it's if a you, prank. you find somebody that has like a bathroom in their office, right? And you want to prank them. So you get a, you and all your friends to go in and like one by one leave a log on top of each other until it's just a bowl full of logs. There are certain circumstances that went, that I would want to be first in and that's definitely one of them i don't want to be the last guy to have to go log on log yeah. because i feel like also gangbangs that was what i was alluding yeah, yeah, to but yeah, thank yeah. you for it just 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 saying just put it out yeah. there see i, I gotta go in and slide in somewhere in the middle there just yeah. I, I sensed you your like joke and then i just you did you, you, i set it up for you and you, yeah. you put it Tipped deep it in. in yeah, yeah. you're welcome appreciate that um yeah i wouldn't want to be the last guy in the log on log because i worry that my log would like Think it would stop. Your log wouldn't like be as big as the other logs. The back of the balls. Would you like start to feel a little inadequate? Oh no, I definitely think. I mean, if there's one thing where I think I can hang, it's log size. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. What about I've, you, Barbara? Can you hang log size? I don't like this conversation. <laughs> yeah. <at laughs> let's all. let's let's move on. I've, I've seen often... way too many destroyed toilets that the visuals are just too real right now. Mm. But here's here's a question for, for you that I have, and this is is disgusting. So bear with me. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but Give it would it. make a shitty podcast if you didn't. Uh, uh. <laughs> um. Do you look after you're done with number two? Always. See, a lot of females that I ask that question to say, no, why would I look? You have to look. You got to know. You, you got to know sure. what it is, right? Yeah. Also, like, sometimes there will be, like, pieces of stuff in there, and you're just like, huh. When did I eat corn? When did I eat corn? That was 16 days ago. Yeah. How long has that corn been floating around inside me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like corn. It had a fantastic <laughs> voyage. <laughs> yeah, and it was popcorn. Why is it back in its very important state? for your... <laughs> It's very important for your health to look at your poop. It's yeah. true. You know where I learned that? Uh, seven years in Tibet. Did you ever see that movie with Brad Pitt? There's a part where there's three Tibetan monks and they're smelling the Dalai Lama's poop. And they're like looking at it and smelling it. And I'm I, like, why are they doing that? Like, oh, because they I, can figure some stuff out about it. I learned it from The Madness of King George. An even yeah. older movie where there you go. Yeah, they're uh, examining King George's bowel movements to determine. Man. And yeah. that was one of my favorite lines in a movie ever. Someone exclaims, what is it? It's a fetid, stinking stool. <laughs> and you're like, isn't it supposed to be? Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? Yeah. Where does that gauge uh, read on, on this one? Yeah. On the poop scale. Oh, also, I've, someone... been, I've been mistaken. Uh, I forgot I forgot to mention that girls don't poop mm. ever. Oh, um, man. As we've talked about true. on Always Open, girls actually just draw a photo, like, of poop. Interesting. They just draw it with, like, a little happy face and put that in the toilet. But then you look it. at that. Yes. So you were right. You were factually correct about what you're saying. It's true. Okay. Interesting. So you draw the emoji. Yeah. Girls actually don't have a butthole. No, that, that's not true. That's I've not seen true. plenty of porn yeah. to the contrary. Yeah, yeah. I watch a lot. <laughs> Gus and I are like, <laughs> we are we are students of pornography. <laughs> so we know when you're lying, Missy. Well, um, they they only like, only when they're ready for butt sex is when they <laughs> open oh, they up. Sprout. The right. yeah. That's when that, they that's, sprout. That, that, and then like when they're water. done, it just goes. That second ad read just keeps getting pushed further and further <laughs> into the future. You're the one that started talking about shitting on planes, didn't you? Or did I yeah, bring that up? Yeah, I mean, talking about, <laughs> <you're> talking <laughs> about <laughs> coffee. Uh, led so to like, that. Mm, yeah, mm, mm. it's it's the funniest thing though because I know I know people that have trouble with bowel movements. So like they just they can't do it. I'm like just start drinking coffee, and people just can't bring themselves to it. I guess you have to acquire that taste well, early not, on. Not everyone has that reaction to coffee. I, guess not, though, I, don't. Yeah. I don't. I do, man. I gotta eat more vegetables and drink more water. That's, That's the trendy iced coffee will do. Does it. LaCroix count as water? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am addicted to LaCroix. 
Lime LaCroix. Is it LaCroix or LaCroix? It's LaCroix. So it's I've LaCroix. Heard, I've heard you, it's LaCroix because it comes from a place called LaCroix. If you look on their in, website, they clarify. I looked this up because I was wondering. They clarify that they call their drink LaCroix. They mm-hmm. look yeah. clarify? Yes. They, I'm not giving you that one. Nah, no, but no, I no. appreciate the no. effort, though. I tried. No. Yeah. Just get a soda stream, dude. That was an air ball. Uh, soda stream. Nah, nah. See, here's Just my problem. Just get a soda stream, squeeze a little bit of fresh lime in there. I'm addicted to soda. Like the, It's like an actual problem Me too. of mine. So Me I'm too. like... I've always been trying to like, get off of it, and specifically Coca-Cola. It's just like a fuck Pepsi, right? Um, but then eventually, Tim, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen in a restaurant when you walk in the know. first time? It's like they only you have order Pepsi? Coke. It's like, oh, is Pepsi okay? It's like, no, I'm like no, it's not like, okay. Leave. It's Why not, you should go into restaurants and ask here? for Pepsi. Well, no one does that, right? That would blow no, their no, mind. no one ever does that. But if you're ever Pepsi. in a rally. And you just gotta hand that cop a Pepsi. Oh, Everything God, will be don't okay. Even start. Don't even go there. It'll don't be okay. Start. Let's y'all. talk about that or United flights That's the anytime thing. soon. The two of my <laughs> least favorite things in the world: United flights and Pepsi. So it's like, I'm, I'm kind of rooting for this whole situation right now because I'm just like y'all both fucked up. Oh my god! What Maybe United will make a deal to just like have Pepsi exclusively on their flights. Oh my god! Don't forget I mean, about how the Jews weren't gassed Bell. either. How are Taco Bell a, a Coke a, a Pepsi place? I, I didn't I didn't hear that. Uh, they got those Mountain Dews though. They got their special Mountain Dews. See, they have the extreme Mountain Dews, it's true. Yeah. Shout out to Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew, bringing it back. But they don't have a Pepsi. diet Mountain Dew, and I like diet. So yeah, they do. And it's, do they? Yeah, it's not, not, it's not part of the normal lineup, though. Yeah, I've never I, seen I'm addicted to soda, so that's the problem. Mm-hmm. So that's why um, this LaCroix thing, I'm like, all right, so there's no calories. You're telling me I can drink as much as I want? And then I do. Here's my problem with LaCroix, and I like LaCroix, and my wife and I just started going down the, La- the LaCroix uh, rabbit hole, which is great. Like, now we're like, oh, what's the best flavor? We're arguing. It's clearly wow. coconut. Um, oh, I haven't had coconut. Coconut's the bomb. The good. problem with LaCroix is that it doesn't taste like anything. It smells like something. Mm-hmm. And so it tricks you into thinking you're actually drinking something that tastes like it. Try it again next time. Be like, am I tasting this or smelling yeah, hold this? Hold your nose and try it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm tasting it. Do, it, do it, a, it a blind, blind, like blind taste down. test. Right. Blind taste test where you hold your nose. And well, I want, so what I want to do is Perrier versus LaCroix. I want to do a taste test of all the LaCroix and see if we can guess what they are. Oh, I guarantee I could. Because mm. you just smell it. Peach. People might Someone be running, people might be running away to get LaCroix. I'm really LaCroix? excited that we're getting some LaCroix right now. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's, it's just like scented. You know, it's like lime, uh, Pellegrino or lime, you know, water. I, I, it's just not an, an upfront taste for me. Mm. Like Diet Coke and Coke, if you haven't, if you don't, you want to do something crazy for yourself, don't drink like if you're a big Coke drinker, a big Diet Coke drinker, don't drink them for like a month yeah. or a, even a week and then come back to them and you'll notice how unbelievably overpowering they well, are. So that's, this is like a, sugar? Okay, yeah, it's so, it's so faux, sh- like fake sugar. Even the fake stuff is like even worse because it tricks your brain. Like, ah. I, I love Coke orgasms a lot. But doing sorry, what you what about said, you say? I'm a big fan of orgasms. Oh, yeah. Who and there's it? like nothing Gus comparable love orgasms. at all. Except for just, when you haven't had Coke for like a month and it's a hot day, you pop one of them cans open, that first sip. A can? A can. Oh See, this God. is the problem. Yeah. Oh, Tim, oh, I love you so much. Thing. There's so no, many things we vibe on. You're going on. in the wrong so area with this. He's a fountain this. guy. Yeah, that beverage is the best. Yeah. Can is the worst. Can, leave. can is the bottle. B- bottle. I'm a bottle. Yeah, there we go. Pound. I'm a bottle. And then can and fountain at No, what? But bottle is up here. Empty it out. Smash it over here on fucking head. Bottle is good. Bottle is good. You ever have a Mexican Coke in one of those bottles? Fountain is the best. Now, the Mexican... I, just call, I just call it a Coke. Yeah, see, I mean, that's uh, what I'm going to refer to it. Like, like when you I go to the movie theater, do you go, can I have a fountain beverage? Or do you go, I'd like a gigantic fuck Coke that I can swim in? Yeah. You want that? Well, we got, Bring it on. We got two flavors here. Hold you, on. sir, with so, a great beard, can, who I've never met before, can, can I get today, and we chatted about your beard. Can I get two cups? Is that possible? Like uh, plastic cups? Yeah, whatever. Uh, while they get that, I'm going to read this here. Uh, oh, do we what, get the ad read? I'm going to do the ad read now. Yay! I want to remind everyone this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. So big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring us. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to create a website or online store. They've got beautiful, award-winning designer templates, 24-7 customer service, and domains. So if you want to start your own peanut butter of the month club, right there. Uh, If you've been thinking about starting your own website or online store, uh, start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash roosterteeth. Enter offer code Rooster Teeth to get 10% off your first purchase. Make your next move with Squarespace. Uh, we talk about it every time Squarespace is a sponsor. You should absolutely have your own website. Those guys have their own website. And uh, a place like Squarespace makes it super Very easy. Very first website, kindoffunny.com, on Squarespace. Did you? Yeah. We were, Tim was like this. Hey, uh, we should probably have a website when we launch on Monday. And I was like, okay, how do we b- build that? Beautifully. And, and we had some, yeah, someone was like, build it. Beautiful. And I was like, Squarespace? It can't be that easy. Were they calling you beautiful? And it was. We, we were never quite sure. The thing is, we put a comment in there for no reason because we think it's hilarious. And I'm pretty sure Squarespace changed their um, tagline because of us. Because mm. we'd go, build it. Beautiful. 
Yeah. But they don't like that anymore. Now it's something different. Anyway, long story short, yeah, I built it in like a day and a half. It's very easy to use and it's very, very good. intuitive. You should try it. If you have something to sell, sell it on Squarespace. Are we going to do a little taste test here? Are yes. we doing the taste uh, test? I'm doing it blind over here so oh. people okay. don't know don't what I'm Don't look over here. Okay. I mean, don't look over there. Y'all talk over You could look over me. Well, I'm, I'm not doing this. I think Tim, I think it's a blind taste I test. I thought for both Tim. of you were doing it. Are oh, we? Just you? Yeah, yeah. We're both going in. I hope one of these I'm is coconut. Fine. I haven't had coconut yet. Coconut's the bomb. It is good, though. Mm. Shout, I mean, shout out to LaCroix. Like, I'm not going to say it's bad. It's just, you put that or you put a Diet Coke in front no, of me. No, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm trying to get over the Coke. I, no dude, I, I support you. Look, you're getting all healthy. You go in LaCroix. Mm -hmm. You're doing the 10 to 12 push-ups. Push Here's the thing. Shout out to 12 push-ups. Diet Coke, today. not much better for you, man. Diet Coke, too, no, is diet. actually probably worse for you. Yeah, yeah that's There's all sorts of studies that say, like, it like fucks up your brain. Do you know which is which? These are, yes. Okay. 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 So, I'm so what, to... are we doing it without smell? Yeah, no smell. So okay. pinch your nose. Pinch your nose. No. Stop screwing around. Oh, my tummy just made a noise. I heard it. <laughs> All right. Let me try that one. Okay. Fooled you. They're both Pellegrino ones. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fucking right. Really? <laughs> you guys are fucking right. No Isn't taste. that wild? Because it's just like, it's just a little bit of an essence of it. Because a lot of taste is just oh, smell fuck. anyway. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to taste. Isn't that wild? I'll try try it, I feel betrayed. Although Gus could right totally now. be screwing with us, and those could just be sparkling. No, they are two totally different Lacroix. Okay, let me try. Let's all swap. Spit. Nothing. It's sparkling water. I can't do this. How the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, move your hand up. Move your oh, hand up higher. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Chillax. I'll be right back. I mean, isn't a lot of taste just smell, anyways? Right. This one I think is lime. I have no idea. Oh, uh, this has. No, well, you, I'm smelling it. Yeah, yeah you smelled totally it. Lime, sorry. That's lemon over there. This is lime. Oh, oh we lemon went between and lemon and lime. I couldn't tell you the difference. <laughs> but anyway. I, I, I was a little upset that they were so similar, but <laughs> you admitted there was no taste. Lemon. A lot of people well, say it's a close cousin of lime. Oh, lemon. it is. Yeah, yeah. kissing cousins. For some people, almost cousins. interchangeable. Lacroix, everyone. You can get these at your local convenience store if you're in Austin, Texas. They call it what is it called? HBB. 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 The local hub. Shout out to Target, which is the only place I can find multiple LaCroix flavors in uh, Northern California. Wait. I straight up bought out the uh, the Safeway in my Dude, house. Dude, I was speaking about me being the best husband on the planet. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm at my wife's like, hey, if you're around any place that sells LaCroix, like maybe stock up on some of the coconut ones for me because I'm out of town right now. Okay. It's in Palm Springs. And I was like, cool, I'm gonna do that. I go to Target. It's Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. They're closed. But I told my wife that I went anyway. I was like, I tried for you and they were closed. So you should love me just the same. And she was like, you're a loser. <laughs> you lost. What a loving, sweet yeah. wife. They have a great family dynamic. I mean, yeah. What's funny is everyone, I talk about my wife a lot, but most of the time I'm just lying. Like I'm just I'm just playing it up because I'm the old guy that's married. All these guys are still young and like cool and hip. Mm -hmm. So Nick's She's wife does exist. Being. It's just very few people have met her. Yeah. You guys have met her. You guys are like, her. very lucky yeah, that you, you did that. I'm honored. Because she... She just doesn't exist to most people. And the thing about her is she dyes her hair constantly. She does not. What, is she not a brunette? She was a brunette at some point. She was a blonde she went, at some point. She went point. a little blonde every once in a while. Um, but yeah, she's had the same color hair for like a few, for like probably a few years now. And she always wears like completely different style of clothing. Mm -hmm. So there'll be times where I only see her like once a year. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm like, that's not Nick's wife. Who's your, who's <laughs> so your it's girl? So like for a while we were convinced that you were just like hiring people. Yeah, Greg thought, Greg swore that I was hiring different people every time he'd meet her. And I was like, no, you're just drunk. That's a you're fucking just, great you're just an bit. Alcoholic. Yeah. That's a great bit. You should do that. Bringing a girl that's a complete different ethnicity. Well, because it's like yeah. when you buy <laughs> when you buy an action figure and then like you you have the normal one and then all of a sudden it's like, now you can get like alternate Spider Man. Jetpack and Batman. Detective Spider Man. And uh, you know, it's like you start getting to that point, you're like, I don't want these anymore. But yeah. you stayed through. No, I want them all. Yeah. I'm a man like that likes variety. That's the great part about being married to my wife. So I never know what I'm gonna get. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll come home and she'll have she'll have a shaved head or something cool like that. You know, maybe a couple tattoos. Maybe it should be a dude. Role play a little bit. Whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll do the old horseback ride. <laughs> I don't Bring know. Bring it back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a there callback. There it is. I tried to do a callback, That's guys, a but we're an of hour comedy. and 15 minutes in, and we've talked about shitting for 45 minutes. Well, say so it's yeah. great that we called back to the horse and not to the, the yeah. fucking toilet. I was going to make a go. camel toe there joke, go. but it just I couldn't fit it in anywhere. I'll give it to you. Thank you. I, See, you almost oh, went there. Good. You had it though. You good. said fit in, and honestly, that's always a joke for me. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's no, good. Did you see that there's a trend of of people getting underwear that has like built in camel toes? There's no. a, a a a piece that 
attaches onto your front area that for gives women? you a fake camel toe. To make it women. look like you got some. I want to wear that. Would, why would you want a fake yeah, camel toe when you can like just that. have a real camel toe? Because maybe they don't actually want the underwear riding it's up probably, between yeah, their more lips. more comfortable to wear that as opposed to actually. Well, then, so why yeah. not just make it like smooth? Why does it have to be lipular? I because think the it, thing is part of the like the fun, you know. Oh, so you still want to you want to put out a front? It's like if you, you had a bra that had like nipples on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There there it is. Is. Oh wow! There wow. It is. I'd... Wow, you're you guys are giant on the spot in there. Kudos to you, control room. Good job, Mike. I assume that's you. No, not no. Mike. Mike shakes no. his hands. Not Mike. Oh, do you no. go by Michael? Is that what it is? <laughs> no, and... Mike does audio. <laughs> Oh. Damn it! There's Mike, Michael. <laughs> oh right, Nick, then Nick. Michael. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a lot of Mike. How many? How many people named Mike? Raise your hand if your name is Michael. One, there's two, two people raising hands. Two out of three people. Now, if your name is Nick, raise your hand if your name is Nick. One, two. Oh my God! There's a bunch of them. Damn it! Three. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Yeah, Four. I gotta raise mine as well. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes I'll walk in here, and be like, "Hey, where's Nick?" And they're like, "Uh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, Schwartz." Yeah. <laughs> there will never be another Nick in the kind of funny offices. I will not allow it. There can yeah. be only one. It's the Highlander rule. That's what my favorite thing is. Uh, you'll, my, you'll get there eventually. my little brother, know, my little brother hangs out in the office a lot, and his name is Greg as well as Greg Miller. So we had to differentiate them. So my brother got the nickname Cool Greg. Yeah, he's Cool Greg. And so he just goes by Cool Greg. And we all call him Cool Greg cool at Greg. all times. I feel like any Greg in comparison to Greg Miller is cool. Greg. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's true. Yes. But my favorite thing about my brother is he just owns it and just kind of goes with it. And then we'll have guests come over, and he'll like open the door for them, and they're like, "Hey, I'm you know a big famous game developer." And I was like, "Hey, I'm cool Greg." like, "Hey, I'm Tim Schafer." He's like, "Hey, I'm Cool Greg." Yeah. Like, and like, they'll come up and be like, was like uh, okay. that dude just introduced himself as Cool Greg. Yeah, that's Cool Greg. <laughs> yeah, he owns it though. Good he should gotta, legally uh, change his name to he Cool should. Greg. He should. I'd, I'd be like, that we, is uh, my name. So, the guy who does the voice of Tucker in Red vs. Blue, his name is Jason. We've, I've known Jason forever. I've known Jason probably like 18 years now or something. For the, probably the first five or six years I knew Jason, uh, his nickname was Poop. Because... It's we, not demoralizing or demeaning at all. The, one of the first things uh, I ever did with Jason was we played a game of Quake. I think it was Quake 2, actually. And he fucking destroyed us. And I was so mad. And his nickname in the game was Poop. Mm. Like his handle was Poop. Mm. And I was like, if you're, you're, I was like, you asshole, you're that good at that game. And that's what you call yourself. Your name's Poop now. So I would introduce him to people for years this as poop. poop. And he, like you said, he owned it. Yeah. Never embarrassed, never anything. And it was like, you mentioned just one day, you're like, all right, yeah. you win. You, so that's the one you yeah, lost. Like, it's you a might, long game. You might have won the Vegas game, game. Yeah, so but years, you lost that one. Years. Now, we already established you, you lost the Vegas game as well. So Everyone lost the Vegas game. You see the trailer for uh, Baby Driver? Yeah. Ooh, I didn't wee. realize that the premise of that movie includes the fact that his name is Baby. baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a driver. That's an unfortunate name to have. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Not if you're cool, though. That Not movie looks cool. so good. It looks cool. It does. I, apparently, right. it was good. I think they had it here in uh, Austin for South by. Yeah, probably. And a lot of people who saw it said it was really great. Yeah, man. He has a that guy could do no wrong. Speaking of movies, did you guys see your name yet? No. No, I saw you tweeting about that. That's the 45-minute uh, anime movie, right? It's it was like two hours. Minutes. Oh, it's two hours. Yeah. I don't I think it's 45 feature. minutes. I don't know why you thought that. What the hell? Oh, I looked it up at the Kabuki, and that's why I said it was running time 47 minutes. Yeah. They're totally wrong. They are anyway, wrong. how was it? It was incredible. Yeah? Yes. An hour and 47 minutes. What? That's why it was. There That's what it was. I missed the hour part. Yep. It's the 47 <laughs> minutes. Because I was going to see it the other night, and I'm like, I'm not going to pay full price for a 47-minute long anime. Hour 47. Yeah. Hour 47, okay. I, th I think I talked about it on a podcast, maybe, where I said that I had bought a ticket for it, and then I didn't go see it because I got too drunk. And I yeah. was like, I don't want to go all the way to a movie. I can't drive right now. So I ended up paying for the ticket and not going, and then I went this weekend. But that is a movie I'm happy I paid twice what? to yeah. see once. What is Absolutely. your name about? It's about... Two people, two high school kids who live in different areas of Japan who are having these weird dreams where they're in someone else's body. And basically they discover that they're in each other's body and they start leaving memos for each other and it's not a dream. And these people are saying you acted weird yesterday and they didn't know why. And they had to like discover the clues about like why they were acting weird. And it turns out there's this other person who was invading their body. And then they try to find each other and it, I don't want to ruin it. Is it a it, true but... story? Yeah, 100% true. <laughs> Yeah. There's a kaiju at the end too. Oh, nice! Yeah. I remember when that happened. Yeah, it's huge. It's big, man. Underwater and shit. No, and so I'm it's worth it. So it's worth seeing in theaters. It looks one hundred percent. Okay. The soundtrack for that movie is beautiful. The animation I heard it makes style. You cry every time you hear it, I I am still crying about that movie. Yeah. Well, now that I know there's an extra hour, I'll definitely. Yeah. It. <laughs> what an it's idiot! Still, it's still playing. I've been seeing movies since I was like ten, like forty-seven minutes. If you guys <laughs> want to see while you're here, what is I'd be this? Happy Master of Disguise. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I, it's definitely on my to-do list. I want to see that. 
Explains the element. Master of Disguise. <laughs> right. okay, I think Master of Disguise is like seventy-five minutes long. Oh, Master okay. of Disguise. Wow. Master of Turtle. Of... Turtle. It's the uh, only thing I remember from that. <laughs> am I not turtly enough for the turtle? Minutes. Dana Carvey, man, this is best. <laughs> oh man, it's been a lot of good movies recently. There have been movies. Fate of the Furious. I just went and saw uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast for the first time. Last What'd you weekend. think? I liked it. Hold on. I didn't clarify dislike. that statement. Like you've seen the new one. Well, I've for seen the. the I've, of course, I saw the cult. The, the one in theaters. Yeah, I'm talking about the definitive edition with Emma's. So. Emma Watson, Emma Thompson. Definitive edition? The Emmas. I was just joking about that. Oh, okay. I just wanted to say the Emmas. Oh. So you, I want to I rewind for a second. Someone, I think it was Tim, mentioned Fate of the Furious. Oh, yeah. It doesn't sound like something I would do. Largest movie opening in the world. Hell yeah, it ever. is. Hell really? yeah, it is. $530 million uh, opening weekend global wow. box office. Wow. Because people love that franchise. And because how dare you say how like I that? I think it's there's how a lot, dare you. There's a lot of big movies that have come out. I think the, the, what, the previous record holder was The Force Awakens. And See that it, that would no, I no it's Jurassic it's, World no it's Force Awakens Force Force Awakens Awakens beat Jurassic opening World. Yes. opening weekend opening not weekend. not grossing all time well there's it's it's confusing we have to clarify Jurassic World of... was the the previous record holder so Force it's now Awakens, number three yes Force Got Awakens it. beat okay. it Force Awakens did not open in China at the same time as the rest of the world it opened in China like two or three weeks late but Fate of the Furious, Fate of the Furious did open at the same time. And Fear the Furious won, I think, by like seven or eight million dollars. Well, the yeah, also thing to be it. clear on is if you're not part of the family yet, you should catch up and watch all of the, the Fast and Furious Wait, films. Yeah, how, how many films have you seen in, in this story I've franchise? I've seen Fate of the Furious, and I've seen... Wait, you saw the last one? And I've seen uh, Fast Five, but I only saw Fast Five in the form of a Master Pancake Theater view. You're literally the worst. Like I can't even handle this. Right yeah, now. I don't. I I thought I liked you, but I you betrayed us. You haven't even seen Tokyo Drift. You haven't seen The Fast and the Furious, the you first film. Seen Turbocharged, the prelude that that happens in between two and three. What about Los? Was it Los? Bandoleros? Los Bandoleros. So that's 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 between <laughs> three and four. Um, the thing about the fa uh, Fast and Furious franchise, obviously, Tim and I love it. Um, it's one of those. Someone put it perfectly in a tweet the other day, where they were like, <laughs> the, "Like it can be summed up perfectly." And I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it was basically it goes from ironical to you love it ironical. very quickly. Yeah, ironical. Yeah, you, you, just, <laughs> yeah. you go from watching it ironically to oh, cool. oh yeah, by and I feel like I'm missing that. The barbecue. I I'm missed that because I haven't seen the you movies. You got the yeah, for sure. I am a little the, the the biggest thing I'm disappointed about with the Fate of the Furious movie is that they didn't spell it F eight. Instead of fate, the kids are dumb. They could. Ironical they is a standard word. It is an alternative adjective form of irony, but it means the same thing as ironic. Ironical is the more old-fashioned form of the word, so and ironic it. is a more common form today. Greg, is ironical a word? Ironical. Yeah, you're on the podcast, by the way. Is ironical a word? Ironical is not a word now, and I know I'm on the podcast. I'm watching. I want to be. You well, you're wrong, to motherfucker, you. because Gus just looked it up, and it is a word. Sorry, continue. I don't know. Who the hell cares? <laughs> no one does. So you're gonna Speak. yell at me? Okay, yeah, I just wanted you to know that the couch is here. Kevin got the couch. Fucking hell. Oh, take a picture of it and tweet it at me. You wanna have me send you a picture of it? Yeah, sure. Everyone that's watching this podcast will totally wait for that picture to come well, in. We'll put it on the podcast. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. How does it look? Is it dumb? Should I send should I send the should I send the the uh, photo to control at roosterteeth.com? <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely do that. Definitely do that. <laughs> I'm on it, I'm on it. I'll do it in a second. Let Perfect. We're probably gonna get a lot of couch awesome. pictures into that good, email address right send now. Some couches. Send some fun couches. Uh, he's still on, he's no, but real talk, Fast and the Furious is a is a very important franchise. And the, the thing is, it's not just this one. If you look at the top ten movies of all time, there's multiple fast movies in there. I'm actually here's the deal. I was proud of us when we, pay, we we it took us an hour and fifteen minutes to talk about poop. Yeah. I'm disappointed that it took us an hour and twenty four minutes to get it's into the Fast and Furious franchise. This whole thing could have been about that. Gus, where do you know. stand on this? I've never seen one. Never. I've seen no any. interest. See, Andy I'm Cortez up on him. didn't watch a single one and part of his like ritual of like becoming a hazy. kind of hazy. Yeah, yeah, he had to watch all of them and by the time he got to number five, Sorry, he was who? like, Andy Cortez, Who's Andy that? from Kind of Funny. I don't know who we that call him Andy Anime he's dead Cortez. To me. Cortez. Yeah. Anime hair. Cortez. Sorry, he's, he's dead. No? Yeah. He, wears he passed really, away. He wears he jeans that are so tight that they like, they make like Adam the Kovic They don't go all jealous. the way up to like, bo like above his, like on his waist. No, they go, well, they're, they're like, are they lower? That, I know. That. I'm yeah, saying yeah, they're, they they're so below. tight that they can't get all the you way up. You can see just the, the, like the, the, the bit of hair all around him. You know, like a little <laughs> bit of top, top butt hair and then like the pube region. I Disgusting. haven't looked that close. I look close. It was part of his hiring when I, when I hired him. I was part like, of the inspection to... process. Yeah, I was like, I have yeah. to inspect you and like you louse the you. tires. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Just start throwing mm -hmm. louse at him. And see what you're getting into. Hose him down a little bit, you know. <laughs> we had a good time. It was a good time. <laughs>
Or, so ironical is a word. <laughs> ironical, ironical is a word. Ironical That's good. No, but that is the thing about the series is it goes, you're like, this is this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And then somewhere along the journey, you're like, I kind of want to watch another one of these. And then by the time you get to seven, you're like, you're legitimately crying Cry. because oh, Paul Walker crying. died. The, and the thing it's is, sad. you will never meet somebody that has seen the first five movies all the way through that doesn't like the franchise. If you watch, the, you'll never meet someone who has not watched the majority of the movies and doesn't like it. Yeah. Because people who yeah, don't like it are going to stop got, watching it. Those <laughs> people are still really going like to hate it one through four. <laughs> like, you got to get to five, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm not watching four movies to start <laughs> liking a movie. My Dude. First, it's my like when your friend's like, you should watch Doctor Who, but you have to start in season five. Right. No, it's like, not. It's different. My first introduction to the Fast and Furious movies was a Master Pancake show, which is like Mystery Science Theater. Master Pancake. Mystery Science Theater, essentially, where they're riffing on the movie. So I that was my first taste of Fast and the Furious, and so every time Vin Diesel was on screen, instead of hearing what he was actually saying, the guys riffing on the movie would just go. No, so you didn't miss much. To be fair, that's spot on. Yeah. yeah. My, I'm I'm working on my Vin Diesel impression, and I just can't do it. But right now, it's more like this: Vin Diesel like car. <laughs> it's more of a caveman. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of caveman slash thing. But I like yeah. it. He actually shows range in this movie, though. I will in give him eight. that. At one point, a, mm-hmm. a man tear goes down his cheek. One, and, and it we're was all CG. very proud. We're, we're pretty sure it was CG. Proud. We don't know that for sure. We'll never know. There's a character we in that movie. It. I won't spoil it. That is the only good part of that movie to me. But I also haven't. Han's seen, not in this one. So I haven't seen. You're wrong. One through seven. Are you talking about Helen Mirren? No, it's a, it's a new character. Yeah, Nick. They- there's a moment where you're supposed to stop trying to spoil things. I don't care. And then you just take it one step further, you know? First you off, do that. everyone should know that Helen Mirren's in this because Helen Mirren's This amazing. character is adorable. It is adorable. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Helen We're not going to go on that. It's not Helen Mirren, but Helen Mirren is adorable. Yeah. Every time she's on screen, I kind of want to make out with her a little bit. Yeah, I get it. Are you Helen Mirren? Where do you come down on Helen Mirren? That, that, I, let me rephrase out. that. I'd make out with How Helen do you, do you like her? Yeah? I would too. I'd, I'd do it. Nick and his wife have their, like, cheat list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we have like the the bucket list people you, if you meet and uh, I so bet Charlie's the, the top three on Nick's list even are with those dreads. Yeah, order. my wife and I share the top three on our lists, so yeah, it's weird. Um, Idris Elba, that Daniel you, Craig, you, you, and Helen Mirren. We're all we're both allowed to have sex with them if we meet you, them. You were meant for each other. Then. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, if my wife ever meets Idris Elba, it's done. Who's your number one? I don't even know. Gia Harris. I had a. Oh, yes. you're a liar. I had a Miller. really so you know these, those kinds of lists are fun. Whatever you like, you talk about hypothetically. I experienced, it was not directed at me, but I was there when someone tried to act on one of those no shit. lists once. Wow. Were you that? Were you that No, uh, no, no, it was not me. I was having dinner. Because you're probably on someone's list. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was having dinner <laughs> with farm. Ed Robertson from the Bare Naked Ladies. And, okay. Uh, and uh, sure so we're sitting were. down, we're eating our food, and then this couple walks over. And they're like, hey, you know, uh, we were eating dinner over here. We saw you guys. We saw y'all eating. And I just want to say, uh, I'm a huge fan. It was a, the woman who was talking. I'm a huge fan. Uh, we're gonna go see you guys in concert. And it's like, oh yeah, cool. That's that's awesome. And she's like, I just want you to know, uh, you're on my list, and uh, he's okay with it. And the guy's like, <laughs> and I'm just, just, and I'm just sitting there like, thumbs up. I'm just, just like trying to cut my pork chop and eat it, and like not make eye contact. It was like the most awkward thing in the world. And it's super gracious guy. It's like, oh hi, that's great. Yeah, that's funny. See you guys at the show. You know, we're gonna have a good time. It was like, and then she's just like, so are we fucking or what? Yeah, <laughs> it's like I don't know what what so... <laughs> what uh, the reaction you expect in that moment is. Like, all right, like you clear the table, like yeah. Yeah. Take, take your it, pants it, off. Here we go. Yeah. It's, it was really, really That's awkward. Super awkward. Any situation I've ever seen where it was that instantaneous of a from zero to fuck, it's always been a bad idea. <laughs> like we had a friend one time where we were all hanging out at a bar, and oh, this girl yeah. comes out and just looks at him and said, I want to fuck you right now. Come with me. And he was like, Okay, and he totally did it just because he was with a, a group of guys. Yeah, like, we egged him on. Like, you gotta do it. You're not a done man that. if you don't do it. And then, like, th- thirty minutes later, he just comes back and he's just like, "That's a long time." Yeah, it was. Well, they had walked. Like, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have had to do that. We, she tried to watch Netflix after, and it was just turned into this whole thing. And like, oh, so they fucked? They oh, yeah. oh, they fucked. Yeah, and then she was like, "Do you want to watch some TV with me? Like, you want to stay and watch TV?" And he's like, "I don't think that would be appropriate. Like, I don't know how this whole thing's supposed <laughs> to go." But I'm pretty <laughs> sure watching like pretty sure old episodes of Frasier. After we have sex together, it's just not the right thing. And he just left and he came back to the bar. And we were like, it was one of those situations where you would, you egg each other on as guys. You're like, you should do this. You should do this. But everyone's sort of hoping that like, there's something that do interrupts it. this. Please don't actually it. do it. Right. You're like, this is, you don't need to do this. Like, this is dumb. He did it. He came back. He's like, I should not have done that. And we're all like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. That was bad. Do you think a girl does that on a regular basis? Mm-hmm. 
I don't know that she does. I think she was in, to be honest, I think she was just in a state where she was like, I need to do this. Like I, for whatever reason, I'm in an emotional state where this needs to happen right now. And she was looking to fulfill that and she did it and no judgment, whatever. Sure. But he, he felt, he was like, I kind of feel like we both on some level took advantage of each other, but at the same time, like both feel dirty about it. Yeah. And he was I, like, I still feel right. About it. I don't know. We drank. I, I could, I could not do that. Like not knowing anything about the other person. It's like that little Dicky yeah. uh, music video, Pillow Talk. Yeah. It's like, you know, he like had, the, the video is he has sex with this woman and then like video. they start learning the about each came, other. The one, right. Yeah, the one we watched. They start like the learning about each other and realizing like they're not compatible yeah. or like they're like she totally different. The what do you mean about fuck with you? Yeah. Fuck with the you fuck totally with different the perspective. Like I just could not be about that. Like yeah. I got to know. At least something. Yeah. You got to know at least yeah. how many Fast and Furious movies you've watched. Yeah. That's true. You do need to know the all important question of the Fast and Furious. Yeah. Like where are you? Are you part of the family or not? And if mm-hmm. you're not part of the family, we can still have sex, but just know that I won't respect you as much. After I uh, had sex with my girlfriend for the first time watching Fast and Furious one because I was forcing her to watch all of them. Jesus Christ! So she was just trying you... to do anything possible to get out of watching You're that movie. Like, yeah, and I was like, this is not going to stop me. No, I think the fact was that the movie turned Tim on so much. <laughs> I was that like, we got to go. Like that GTO it. was amazing. Yeah. True story. Tim also introduced uh, his girlfriend to the the Dark Knight trilogy, the Batman, the the Nolan trilogy, and I was watching. I think we were on a plane together, and we were watching Batman Begins. And when <laughs> someone using your timing belt out yeah, in the parking lot, that's oh. brutal. Um, what, I, I, I'm remembering this correctly. Right? So, so what, what happened was yeah, it was whatever. Batman Begins, and there's the part where spoiler alert: uh, Bruce Wayne's parents get, get killed, killed, right? And she, and goes she lets like out. This. <gasps> An audible, Did they just kill his parents? An audible <laughs> and gasp. Like, and it's like, do you not know Batman? Do you not know Batman? <laughs> oh my God. How do you not know that? And she's like, I didn't know his parents died. I'm like, thus forming Batman. That's the whole point of him. Being, if the parents didn't die, he would be a fucking surgeon yeah. or some cool shit like that. But it was cool, though, because she was like, kid. she was totally not kid, into yeah. the whole superhero thing. So like being introduced to it through the Dark Knight trilogy, she was like, this is fucking incredible. And I'm like, you oh, that's the best it gets. Did Sorry, her the girl. Biggest, you did her the biggest disservice. You should have started her with the 19... Well, probably the... Yeah, the 1989 Batman would have been the place to start her. She'd have been like, this is weird. No, then you would have gotten to Batman Returns. She'd have been like, this is super weird. Then you would have gotten Forever and she'd have been like, please stop making me watch this. <laughs> no, Batman Forever is great. Batman... Because oh, Batman Forever would. would. Mr. You Freeze. would. No, Batman. That's Batman and Robin. That's yeah. Batman and Robin. Yeah. Batman, Batman Forever is Val Kilmer with mm. uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. Is Batman and Jim Carrey. Arguably, it starts to go downhill there. Which one Those has are the, the Riddler? Jim Carrey. Yeah. That's the Schumacher era. It's Batman and yeah. Robin. Batman, but, and, Batman and Robin's the worst one. Yeah. Batman and Robin's one. He's like he has the Bat Amex card, and he's like, don't leave home without it. And yeah. And ba- Batman and Robin's also the one where Mr. Freeze is freezing everything, and you can see the icicles are just like plastic, and they're just like waving <laughs> mm-hmm. all the time. But he has some of the best one-liners ever written. Yeah. On, uh, I mean, Barb, you would appreciate that. That's when he's like, "What yeah. killed the dinosaurs? The Ice, ice Age." Oh, all right. <laughs> And he's like, ice to meet you. Ice to meet you. <laughs> he's yeah. so good. That was the best. That was the last great role. Of remember when he was our governor? I do remember that. Yeah. Actually, I don't remember it that much because I kind of I wasn't following politics. Uh, it was, it was him versus Gary Coleman. Like, thanks, California. That's what we had to deal with. Yeah, I don't think I voted in that in that in that election. No, that was all, that was a crazy election because it was also like that porn star from LA yeah, who was running for governor. Yeah, and yeah. it's so telling of California. Yeah, California's dope. It don't blame anything on us. Yeah, come mm-hmm. on. I mean, it doesn't affect me. That's true. I'm good. Nothing affects you. Because you're Canadian. Oh, uh, is, it, is that the couch? Oh, God. That is oh, the it couch. looks really good. He did a good job. Kev, you did a great job. That yeah. looks great. Kevin's in the way of the couch, so I can't he see is. the whole thing. Yeah. Well, it's also. What's that, what's that couch for? Uh, we have a small space. Well, here's the thing. When people come to visit our studio up in San Francisco, it's it's a little um, it's a little small. But when, so when they come, we don't have desks for everyone. So we have a little couch. People, like guests can come and hang out and chill. Mm. I guess a shorter answer is it's for our guests. Or people who want to sit on the couch. Yeah. Because the problem is when you have guests over, then all they want to do is talk to you and right. like, don't let you actually work. But it's also awkward when you stand So then we, when we come to Texas, that's what we do here. Yeah. We just go, go from room to room bothering can't people. Can't confirm. It's awesome. What's up, Bethany? You were just kind of our like fun little tour I guide. I somehow became their tour guide today. It was awesome. Yeah. Because we like hanging out with you. And I felt bad because we're a great excuse or reason not to do any work. Um, and you're super busy. So sorry about that. I got but Thanks for taking today. us out to lunch. That was super fun. I did more editing on my first vlog. How'd that go? Coming out for first member soon. What was your first vlog about? A lot of stuff. What did you talk about? I didn't talk about anything. I, I basically just documented my last month. Yeah? A lot of behind the scenes stuff. Cool. A lot of really, really shitty editing. Can't wait for people That's to see it. it. It's a you, so you're editing it. Oh, yeah. What did you edit in? iMovie. Great platform. 
<laughs> no. the it's all I have. That's the yeah. only thing I have. Because uh, yeah, yeah, we don't have any editing stations here no, at all. I no, I mean this is. Gus doesn't have uh, ten in his little lab. I don't on my personal fucking computer. Mm. Gus has uh, the, the the PC in my office has Premiere on it. I don't want to go in your office. Well, yeah, your office is weird. That's where all your uh, jizz rag. The are. masturbatorium. Yeah, that's your masturbatorium. I like you being do, in my office of... with my fucking computer, my fucking everything. Get your it fucking iMovie. For Creative Cloud. Premiere is like the easiest. They, they, we hear we get this question a lot because we we do a lot of production Premier. at the Confine Studios. Premiere is absolutely the go-to. You gotta okay. use it. You gotta I think that's what we use. And shout out to Sony Vegas though. Fuck you know? no, fuck no. Yeah. No one knows. They tried. You're the only one that used that. And I loved it. And I fought for it. It's part of the charm of the blog. Shout out to Apple not supporting any of their professional uh, platforms anymore. Yeah. No, so. they'll eventually have a new Mac Pro. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how many USB ports it has. We don't don't care. Maybe it'll be red. Ooh. Well, that'll be fun. <laughs> Want it? We get a lot of hate for that comment, but whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, no, no, they've they've given up on the uh, on the pro market. They really have. Yeah, they give up on like five. Like no, no, we're gonna make a new back pro eventually. It's been what like four years since they three years since they made one. Well, the second they decided that Final Cut was like an end of life system, it was like oh shit, something's yeah. not good here. And then they were like, we don't need ports on any of our laptops, and people were like, this is bad. This is a bad <laughs> sign. Yeah, yeah. You can use Thunderbolt for everything. No, thank you. All right. Well, it's time to uh, wrap this podcast up. Oh, oh yeah, we, we mentioned it briefly, yeah. but uh, Kind of Funny Live 3 is coming up soon. When kind is of that? Funny Live 3 is happening. It's June 3rd in San Francisco, California. It's going to be a fun time. Last year, we had Cisco show up. More importantly, you there. had me there. Yeah. That was great. Barbara that was, was there. I was there. Uh, you was kissed fun. Nick on the cheek at some point. I used that as like a gift to promote things. And I'll do it again nice. this year. Um, but yeah, you, get, you had no, the greatest tickets. intro of any event ever, Tim. Thank you. That was fucking amazing. You Thank got, you. I don't know if we could pull that up somehow. We will. We but if we could go to youtube.com slash kind of funny in the best of kind of funny playlist on the front page, kind of funny live two is yeah. there. In order my to watch that, you have to hit the subscribe at 19 button. minutes in. I, I memorized <laughs> yes. that. But yeah, my entrance was I came from behind the crowd and I crowd surfed into like to the stage. They even turned you at the last minute they and put you on your feet. And just put me I was convinced that you were gonna go face first. Every no one believed in me. No one betting. believed in it. It wasn't was you, it was the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're relying oh, on so many you. people to do that. I believed in them and I was just like, I you know, I was still heavily just pounding Coke. So Coca Cola. <laughs> the best part of yeah. that whole thing was watching Coca Cola. Important, important uh, clarification there. Um and so I was I Not was a bigger yeah, boy yeah. than I am now. And they got they did it, man. They did anything. They, they did. made me believe in magic. What's again. amazing is and when you cut that, I know we're going long in the tooth, Gus, I apologize. No, no, that's fine. But when you cut that, you cut out the part where you were like, Come on. Come on, get me up! And there was like four dudes that just were trying. Not and true. Then two other guys came, and then nope. three other guys came, and they finally lifted you in the air. All the footage like, is there. Oh. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I've never been happier in my entire life than when I was just like floating, floating on thin air. Yeah, so we're gonna have to see, it's, we're gonna have people. to put in a lot of uh, elbow grease to figure out how to outdo that. Entrance. We're gonna outdo it. We have an idea. My entrance this year is gonna be even. This bigger time you're gonna carry better. each audience member onto one the by stage. one. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you're gonna feed them the the, the mac and cheese with the. Mm -hmm. The flaming hot yeah. cheeto dust on. The top only of thing it. more impressive than my entrance was we at some point brought a fan up on stage because he had a kind of funny tattoo, and so we showed that. And when he was trying to go back to where he was in the audience, he was like, "Can I crowd surf back?" And I was like, "Fuck yeah, let's do it!" Like RTs cover the insurance, and then uh, <laughs> he kind of like Not looks out and he like face first flops down on the audience and starts swimming like he was crowd swimming. Yeah, Just... I wouldn't have been able to do that without some serious groping issues. Oh, I'm sure things were touched. You would have groped the guy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, kindoffunny.com slash KFL3, June 3rd. Tickets still available. Tickets are still available. It's going to be fun. We got a lot of Looks like it's a two-day event? Uh, one it's day a one-day event. event for normal. Two-day if you're VIP, but I think the VIP yeah, tickets are sold, out, sold out. Okay. Yeah. So it's a ticket to Kind of Funny Live 3, June 3rd. Yes. 7 p.m. Yes. And Rooster Teeth people will be there. Who? I don't know yet. Lots. Maybe Barb. We ha it has Maybe to be Barb. Us. I've told Barb she has to come. Yeah. So. There's a lot of maybes, which will probably turn into yeses at the last yeah. minute. All right, well, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, if you do not have a ticket for Kind of Funny Live 3 yet, go get one. And we'll see you guys next week. I love you. Bye.